What's up, everyone? It is June 12th. It is a Monday, and it's fucking freezing cold in Brazil. Uh, first off, mystery is not <laughs> dead. Okay, the, the my fucking um, marketing guys who help make these titles <clears throat> and thumbnails, they put remembering mystery, but no, this is not like a tribute after his death okay he's still alive and well he's run he's trying to stay out of the limelight these days um now let me preface this okay this is not like a typical like bashing thing okay this is going to be a professional critique on some of the areas that weren't really set up the best in the mystery method but i want it to be very clear i have the utmost respect for mystery he's the guy i respect the most in the community, hands down. I think that his contributions are unparalleled. And, you know, I it, it did wonders for my game. There's, there's some parts he really, really, really nailed. And he put a lot of, like, his playbook together from scratch. Okay, he was one of the original innovators, right? Like this, he was a magician. For those of you who don't know, okay, this, his, he was in the book The Game, so a lot of you have read that. His name is Eric von Markovic. I think he's either, he's either 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. I think 6'6. Six, six. So he's taller than me. I'm 6'4. But he was like a street performer and magician in Canada. He's from Toronto. And just from like interacting with people and like wowing them with fucking tricks on the street and stuff like that, it gave him experience approaching strangers and interacting with strangers. And he's a very intelligent guy. And he started to pick up on patterns, right? And when you're when you're performing like magic tricks, it's essentially like routines and old school pickup, right? So a lot of that led, you know, or, or lent credence to the early parts of his method. But after I read the book, The Game, I read the book, Mystery Method. Both of these came as recommendations from a close friend of mine who's very intellectual, very intelligent, um, who ended up doing a PhD in quantum physics, specializing in string theory. Now he's living on a boat off LA's coast, uh, compiling minimal Linux distributions and stuff like that, right? But when I read Mystery Method, it was like a tactical manual full of strategy and steps, and, and that really resonated with me because that's how I think. I think very systematically and algorithmic, algorithmically. Okay, so I just wanted to be clear up front. This isn't like, a, you know, oh, I think Mystery sucks or, um, you know, let's bash on his method because he was way off. A lot of his stuff was spot on, right? The The compliance model which he took from operant conditioning and psychology you know classic reward and punishment um and, and a bunch of other things he really 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 nailed but i one big critique i have with him despite the fact that i respect him a great deal and think that his system was was really good um is that he kind of failed to evolve and optimize it so he kind of put forth a lot of these principles and then like they got frozen in time. So a lot of this shit's like almost 20 years old and should have been dispensed with or at least changed and upgraded for the sake of optimization, um, but he didn't. But I'm gonna go through uh, what I believe to be the things that were not necessarily correct or outdated, okay? Um, I think this is from Zara. It's like freezing today. I don't normally wear long sleeve shirts in Brazil, but um, it's coming up on winter. So there's going to be some cold days here and there. Speak, brother. It's Portuguese. All right. So let's let's go through. Um, so some of the things, this is like a little preview. I made a list here. Some of the things that I want to talk about, and you guys can leave stuff in the chat. I want to talk about negs peacocking group theory which was mystery's idea that you should open the group and ignore the target uh routines the fact that there was really no focus on ob objection handling in mystery method which is super important uh the seven hour rule where he says you need a minimum of four to seven four to ten hours of comfort building before you bang the girl in order for her to not get buyer's remorse the average of seven hours uh something like freeze outs those are some of the main ones I want to talk about. Um, so let's just start right off. 
start off with peacocking. Okay, that's like a famous thing. Peacocking entails, I'll define each of these things and then kind of go over like pros and cons, okay? <clears throat> so peacocking was this idea. They took it from the, the animal peacock who's like putting out this like colorful plume and then that attracts other animals. It's like visually appealing. And I don't remember what fucking evolutionary advantage that has for peacocks. You know, it should be obvious, I guess, but I don't know the exact details there. But mystery recommended that people wear at least one item of clothing or accessory <clears throat> that would allow the girl to comment on. Okay, like something like noteworthy that she could come speak to you about. And then you're supposed to respond as he instructs, oh, you don't really care about that thing. You're just attracted to me, right? So like, say he wears the top hat and the goggles, which is like his classical attire or like a feather boa. Girls come over, hey, what's this feather boa? Oh, you don't care about this feather boa. You're, you're just talking to me because you're attracted to me. Hi, I'm mystery, right? So it, it gave girls an excuse to open you. So that's that's the theory there behind peacocking. And it also made you stand out from other people, right? Now, one could argue maybe that covering your arms and, and chest and tattoos is peacocking permanently on some level, right? And I've had some girls approach me. It doesn't happen that often though, right? Like if we're being, people are like, how often do you get approached? Almost never, most of the time, never, just like every other dude, okay? That girls aren't really approaching. Like it's not really a thing. Um, again, every every once in a while, like, like if you've heard guys claim that they're getting approached regularly, it's a lie, okay? Like, um, you know, unless unless they're like, very exotic looking or like you know super jacked on steroids right like where, where like people are going to be like noticing them and stuff like that but like <clears throat> in general guys are not being approached so like owen cook is like a classic you know liar who's who's gone on record saying that he's getting approached a couple times a day even if he's not dressed well and i even made a shirt that said that <laughs> like back in 2019 when i was recording on youtube it had his stupid face and it said, I get approached a couple of times a day, even when I'm not dressed well. I think he said that in the blueprint decoded or foundations. But yeah, that's a flat out lie. That's not happening. Okay. Um, but anyways, when I first started the game, I bought this jacket that was like a hundred dollars. I didn't have that much money at that time. And that was like a big deal. And it was like a black kind of blazer type thing with like all these it's like bedazzled like jewels on the back. So like girls would come up and, and be like, oh, I like your jacket. And I'd be like, no, you don't. You're just attracted to me. Right. So overall, like peacocking can be a little corny and taken too far. Um, let's look at one real quick famous picture of old school pickup guys. Um, you know, I mean, this is how like, you know, those memes where it's like, you know, how, how does everyone see the community? They, they see everyone as a bunch of like, you know, as like peacocking weirdos, right? Because that was very prevalent in a lot of old school game. So let me show you guys very briefly um, this picture real quick of what, of what these guys typically looked like. Um, so I'm just going to share this real fast here. Okay. So this picture we have over here on the right, I tried to enlarge it and it didn't enlarge. All right. Like mystery is wearing like fucking look how tall he is. He's like six foot six. Neil's wearing what looks like a, a snake skin jacket. Mystery has the top hat on, you know, some guys paint their nails black and have like fucking, you know, look at him here in the interview here. He's got the fucking top hat here. He has the nails painted black uh, the goggles. And, and again, the idea is so that girls will talk to you and see you look different. And like, there is a little bit of merit to this. Okay. Because if you look at a guy, like, let's look at like Dave Navarro. Okay. He's like, he was in the red hot chili peppers. Um, girls like this kind of a look, you know, he would wear like eyeliner and shit like that. And on one hand, it looks a little gay, right? It looks a little bit feminine, but chicks are like into this look. Right? So at least some chicks, right? Like tattoos, like, like 
alternative type shit. So I think in a way that's what he was trying to emulate. I mean, look at here's the fucking nail polish, right? But Dave Navarro, you know, granted he's like a fucking guitarist. He was in Jane's Addiction, and I think he was in Red Hot Chili Peppers too. Um, you know, he's obviously getting laid because he's a fucking famous rock star. But he, but he has this look where it's like a bad boy or whatever. Um, anyways, I think like that's where some of it's coming from is they, they're trying to like emulate that kind of guy, but. I think, you know, it's not, it's not really necessary. <laughs> like, here we go. That's, that's fucking common theme to a lot of guys in the community, right? Or that, that went and did something great and they went to go through a lot of shit first. Um, okay. So, you know, my thought, just to, so we can move on to the next one. My thought on peacocking is like where, you know, this isn't really peacocking, but like where, where like a few accessories that differentiate you, you can have like, a basic watch you can wear like a necklace i used to wear if you, anybody would watch my videos from a couple of years ago um and before i was wearing like two three bracelets at once but once i got hand tattoos with the arms it kind of disrupted the the fucking design here so now i don't really wear bracelets just because i have like arm and hand tattoos but the point is like you don't need to dress like a clown you don't need to dress like a freak and you don't need to you definitely don't need to dress we'll show one more example guys like vince calvin take it like to the extreme um and think that's like cool or whatever um this guy is rocking like a pink mohawk you know like rocker platform boots um all that kind of shit right so let's look at that real quick but all the guys i know that are like banging a lot of chicks myself included we all like you know we we don't go like all out with the dress you don't need to like look at this this is like an extreme right standing up pink mohawk ears pierced uh leather jacket you know he he literally like looks like a like a front man for a band and again i think that's what they're going for right like they're they're trying to these are like examples of extreme peacocking they're trying to like stand out from everyone else so that people think there's like something special about them or that so they carry you know he's like a small dude look at this Covered in tattoos, pink mohawk, platform shoes. You know, he's got like wallet chains and like all this fucking shit going on. Is that necessary? No. Is it like way over the top? I think so. Yes. Um, so again, like it's not that you, and again, you don't need fucking, you don't need the girls to be opening you anyways. What is that? That, that saves you like, you know, that saves you the the discomfort of having to go approach a stranger once in a while because she might walk up to you. There's not really that much of an upside in there, and, and you're going to look like a freak show and a clown in a way. Um, especially like, you know, these guys, these pickup guys used to go, they'd be like dressed to the nines and then they're like going and like posting up in the club or like, you know, in a predatory way, like patrolling the venue, like, whoa. And, and it, it just, you just look kind of like a, a fucking weirdo. Okay. So, Again, just like just like real like world class game doesn't look all gamey and fancy, a real like big time player that's like fucking crushing the game isn't going to go dress like a clown. So the, you know, I think that the peacocking stuff um, was a little bit pushed too hard in the in the old school game, and I, and I don't think it's really that important at all. Like the utility, you know, like the the sacrifice of like dressing like a clown and and, and the negatives that come with that versus the utility of like that causing a girl to like be like oh that guy's different let me go speak to him it's just not not much of an upshot there and, and overall it's kind of stupid um and yeah i'm gonna fucking uh, uh, I, I swear there's like new dumb shit on the internet every single day okay and i i don't really want to go openly speak out right now against patrick bet david and adam sosnick um because I might be going back on valuetainment. But I will say publicly that I'm disappointed, pretty heavily disappointed in valuetainment's decision to go platform a guy that has a whole bunch of serious criminal charges against him and has done a whole bunch of fucked up shit that he's admitted to on camera. Okay, they, they took the opportunity to, to get views and get exposure. It's like they brought Myron on the show after his little like 
Ku Klux Klan stunt and Nazi imitations and, and you know, the white power and all this nonsense. And, the, and they're bringing on rapists on their show, people that are admitting to rape. Um, you know, I'm already demonetized. I don't need to say grape. And, you know, that, that's just very sad, right? And it, it, I've seen time and time again, Patrick Bet David will really do anything for the clicks. Okay, so, but at the same time, embodies this persona of like oh you need to you know you need to have principles and standards okay then why don't you practice what you preach right don't how about not bringing on fresh and fit after they're openly hoping or openly hosting rapists and joking about it um after they're you know doing all this like disgusting racism stuff ku klux klan stuff hitler stuff on camera being extremely disrespectful and horrible to girls, maybe don't bring them on your show, but it gets views and clicks. So I guess it's a no brainer, right? When you're looking at things one dimension like that, about growing a brand, controversial, horrible figures that are ethically dubious, uh, that doesn't sit well with me. Guys like Abba and Preach doesn't sit well with them, right? So there's a difference. There's people that are willing to fucking sell out and host people like that and be all buddy buddy. And I didn't watch the interview yet. And what, what I'm referring to, by the way, is Patrick Bet David and, and Adam Sosnick from Value Tainment flew out to Romania to spend time with Andrew Tate. And I knew it was going to be like a dick sucking fest. Okay, quite literally. Like kissing his ass. Yeah, top G, like broing out and stuff. And I didn't watch any of the interview yet, but that's what I heard that they're like really, really kissing his ass. Okay. And, and as if he's like, you know, and I think that's really kind of disgusting in a way because this guy is not a good guy, Andrew Tate, that is. And uh, he's objectively not a good guy. Okay? He's objectively running a cult, a pyramid scheme. And there's even more girls coming forth accusing him of rape now. There was just another one like three or four days ago. I didn't do a video about it yet. But some chick said that he was fucking her and like choked her to the point where she passed out and she woke up woke up and he was fucking her unconscious that is her allegation um and again he'll say matrix conspiracy never happened blah 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 but there's multiple other girls across multiple other years across multiple other countries accusing him of rape and physical violence including other girls that are third parties that witnessed these alleged rapes or alleged strangulations and physical attacks and there's just lots of people in lots of years and countries in different situations reporting the same exact thing with lots of details including witnesses okay so in my opinion as a logical person with common sense it's very unlikely that it's all a conspiracy okay but that doesn't stop patrick but david and adam sosnick from going into the top g's house and leveraging his popularity to grow their brand and being buddy buddy with him okay i think that was quite disgusting but can't say I was surprised. Okay. Um, all right. But yeah, I, I, I really don't have any interest in sitting through that interview. I think it's disgusting what's happening there. I'll, I'll provide some critique, but I have some buddies that I do plan on watching it. And I told them just note timestamps and I'll react to the key parts. Okay. Uh, so we covered peacocking, the consensus on that. And I'll try to move a little faster here so I can get to all the questions. The consensus on that is Brazilian Valentine's Day. So me and Liz have uh, dinner plans after this. Um, the consensus on the peacocking is don't take it to an extreme, right? You can have your own unique style without looking like a clown, without looking like a freak. Okay. And, and you shouldn't go and do things like crazy things, right? Like wearing crazy attire or even getting tattoos just so that you can draw attention or, or have people approach you. It's not necessary. And, and the upside is very limited. Okay. Next on the list negs okay it's short for neg hit okay it's it's basically a backhanded compliment the classic example is nice nails are they real when you know that they're fake nails right and the girl's like um no and then you're supposed to if you're doing this correctly you're supposed to like pause almost as if she dropped value in your mind and be like oh well they're nice anyways right but the whole theory behind this is she's a hot girl let me do it this way. She's a hot girl. Let's say she's a nine or 9.5, right? So her value is here. You're just 
some regular guy. So here's the problem already is that you're presupposing that your value is lower and that you need to knock her down some pegs so that you you get equaled out. Okay. So like a priori using some philosophy terms, that's like before experience, just like in theory, it's already incorrect based on the assumption that her value is higher than yours. The correct way that you should approach every interaction is that you're on the same level as that girl. You don't need to make it a misogynistic thing or a disrespectful thing or an arrogance thing that you're better than all the girls. Like a lot of these red pill guys try to act and claim, but instead <clears throat> you're good enough for any girl. Does that mean you can't keep working on yourself? No. Does that mean your uh, sexual market value is maxed out? No. Does your game maxed out? No. But I thought you're, you know, you're at hundred out of hundred and you're on her level. That 100 out of 100 mindset is just being confident in who you are and what you bring to the table and fully believing that you're good enough right now for any girl. It's an extremely powerful mindset. Okay, If you make that change, it's going to do wonders for your game and your life. Now, um, so the whole idea is like, okay, so, so she's here, right? You come in and you're throwing these necks, okay? And I used to do this shit a lot. And he, mystery says they're even more effective on the hottest girls because they're used to just guys kissing their ass, giving them compliments, uh, giving them lots of attention, lots of praise. And this ties into group theory, which I'm going to tie into this next stuff right now, just so it makes more sense. So mystery had a, had a concept called group theory where he instructed, now don't take this to heart because I don't believe this is correct, but he instructed, and, and you know, there's pros and cons and it can work, but it's not an optimal move. Um, I was doing this. I broke 100 lay count just using mystery method for the record. Okay. But he instructed, let's say there's a group of three girls. You go and you open the whole group. And according to mystery, you should ignore the target. The target is the girl that you want to bang. So let's say there's three girls. Let's say there's like two average looking girls and a really hot girl. You open the whole group and then you speak to the uglier ones and you ignore the hot one. And what's supposed to happen according to mystery is in the narrative is that she thinks I always get the attention. This guy doesn't seem to be like too impressed by me or phased by my beauty. Therefore, I'm curious about this guy. There's something different about this guy. And he, he's probably used to fucking girls like me all the time. Like that's how like the theory goes in general. And then and you're like entertaining the friends and ignoring the target. And then you're tossing some negs at the target to like drop her value down. Okay, this is mystery's strategy here. So the way that would look is like one of the examples he gives it's a classic example is when you're ignoring the target <clears throat> and she tries to get involved in the conversation you turn and you say is she always like this like is she always like needy like this or is she always like you know blah 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 and, you, and you're ba basically like taking shots at the target at her own expense and and then like the ugly girls are like laughing you know not like in a malicious way but it's like poking fun at her, right? Like, let's say like the target laughs at one of your jokes and you turn and you're like, look at her nose. She looks like a bunny when she's laughing. Is she always like this, right? And the friends are like, ha, ha, ha. And the target is supposed to feel like bad about herself because you're poking fun at her when normally she's getting all the attention because she's the hot one. And normally, and the whole idea, part of what, what factors into this, why he advocates this strategy is that normally like when you go up to the hot one, the friends are going to come in and try to cock block because their hot friend always gets the attention and they're jealous and they're conditioned to just like block so that they don't have to like feel bad about themselves, right? And so that they can save the friend, not to mention most guys are low value and the hot girl can't entertain an endless stream of nice guy approaches as mystery says, okay? So they have to cut it off by saving her. Hi, we're lesbians. Hi, we're having a girl's night. Uh, go away, you know, whatever, the various degrees of politeness based on, you know, how soft you seem and how rude they are. Okay. So, um, so you open the group, according to mystery, you ignore the target, you throw those little negs, then you like kind of shift your attention to the target and you like act like she's like winning you over. Okay. Beauty is common. Tell me more about what makes you special, what makes you different. And, and you're trying to get her to qualify herself so that she's telling you reasons why, you know, she has worth or value and, and you're showing appreciation for those things. Um, 
and he and he broke he had attraction comfort seduction he broke each of those things into sub stages there's like a1 a2 a3 comfort c1 c2 c3 seduction c1 c2 c3 or s1 s2 s3 and there was like pitfalls right like if you just go from attraction to seduction you skip the comfort stage the girl could get buyer's remorse um if you just go straight to seduction it's called like fool's mate it's where you you know it's like a ch term from chess where like you're trying to win too fast um and there's like you know the player's trap and he talks while he's in the book about like improper sequencing mistakes and i loved all this shit. right a lot of guys find it too complicated but that really resonated with me because i'm a systematic thinker i'm an algorithmic thinker and being able to break the whole game into three parts attraction comfort seduction and then each of those stages into sub stages it really gives you a roadmap for how to navigate interactions forward so that was invaluable for me in the beginning now the reason why i think group theory is wrong is because like since 2012 2013 i started just opening the target directly like at like post 100 lay count i just started walking up they, let's go back to that example again there's like a nine and two fives right and normally the nines have hot friends but sometimes they have fat friends and stuff like that but let's say for the sake of keeping things consistent let's say there's a nine and two fives okay make sure you guys hit the like button there's, there's a lot of really good stuff i'm gonna be discussing here um now the way that i do it is i would walk up let's say the three girls are talking i would walk up to the girl i want to talk to and i would typically like put my arm around the girl and I would speak to the friend that she's speaking to first. And I would say, hey, sorry to interrupt. I wanted to meet her real quick. Hey, I'm John. Nice to meet you. Then I would typically ask, how do you guys know each other? Sorry to interrupt. How do you guys know each other? Oh, we're, we're friends from blah, blah, blah. Oh, cool. You should meet. And then I turn to my wingman. Let's say I'm out with Josh. Hey, by the way, Josh just fucking confirmed today he's going to be running Miami, which is with me. So I'm like super excited about that. Um, and as a, a quick announcement, and this is not at all sales related. Like if anybody books one of the call, I can show you there's eight guys literally that have signed up out of the nine spots. Okay. We just had our eighth guy sign up over the weekend and there's like a list of like 12 guys trying to either arrange finances or shift their schedule so they can make those dates work in Miami. It's July 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. But we literally are, this is not at all. Like I even told my team, my team was going to send out emails and make community posts saying, Hey, we have one spot left. I'm like, don't do that. People are going to think it's fake and that we're just saying there's one spot left as a marketing gimmick, even though there really is one spot left. Let me just speak to it in a video. And we already have like 12 guys, like it's first come first serve. So like out of those 12 guys, whoever can put the money down or, or, um, you know, make their schedule work, they're going to get that spot. So in the in the lineup is crazy like is it, the program is very expensive right i'm not going to go into the pricing now but like the the students that have signed up um we keep everybody's identity confidential but there's like a really high profile lawyer um uh, i'm not going to say where they're based but like you know in a prestigious country where, where there's a lot of like tax breaks and stuff um you know there's there's like tech engineers and programmers um from like google and other top tech companies there's an owner of a hedge fund um you know there, there's it's it's basically a bunch of like very bright very successful guys and it's going to be my best training i've ever put on okay and there is one spot left for real okay there's we we're taking nine guys it's me and josh coaching and, and my buddy connor and the three of us run the eight-week program we're the three coaches on the eight-week program connor is over 600 lay count he specializes in day game josh is over 700 lay count He's very good at the whole game, but I think he prefers night game like me, right? Me and Josh are more night game guys. And I'm at 1,662, right? So you had their count of 1,300 plus with my count of 1,662. You're, you're looking at about like 3,000 lay count between the three of us. Um, I've known Connor since 2012, and I've known Josh since 2013. So these are like close friends of a decade we've like talked on almost a daily basis and gone through the whole evolution and optimization of the game together coached endless clients gotten guys extremely good and we are at our best levels of our own skills as well as our levels of coaching are at the best levels so um connor is still not okay with showing his face publicly which is fine but you know he's been on 
coach streams and stuff like that, but we just don't have them on, on the camera. Um, whereas Josh, you guys have probably seen him on my YouTube lives. But anyways, if you have interest in that program, you really should act ASAP. We do have financing options if you are short on funds currently, but it will be five full days of training. Like I'm putting together the itinerary right now. It's not just day game and night game every day, which there's that too, but I'm training on every little piece of the game. Liz will be there to revamp your profile. We rent it out like an MTB crib style mansion. It's like 15 grand. Um, we have two really high end videographers that have filmed actually war room events and um, they're not affiliated with the war room anyway, but they filmed like war room stuff and Andrew Tate's programs. They've filmed stuff for a bunch of athletes and stuff and they're going to be living in the mansion. <clears throat> so we're going to document everything, film infield for all the fucking people that bitch about me not making recent U.S. infield. There will be recent U.S. infield with me and Josh. You know, the reason there's so much bullshit that goes into recording and feel I'm not going to go on a, a rant about that, but it, it's like a huge fucking technical nightmare to get everything running properly. And, you know, I've been in Brazil for three and a half years now and people speak Portuguese, so it'd be useless to film here. Uh, nor do I even really want to. I still have endless amounts of footage that people have never seen. That's not my products or on YouTube that we have edited. Um, anyways, so uh, get on that Miami program if, you know, if you want to take that last spot. Um, but it'll probably close out in the next couple of days anyways, because we're, we're reaching back out to those 12 guys and just telling them that we're, we're literally down to the last spot. So, uh, okay. And, we, and we're only taking nine because we always do strict three to one ratio. So me, Josh, Connor, nine guys, it's three to one. Um, who made the three to one ratio mystery. Uh, okay. And for the record, like he had a company called social dynamics. He defined the bootcamp model and all this stuff. And RSD came along. Nick Coe and Owen Cook, and they made real social dynamics, which was kind of like a fuck you to mystery. And then they like went high powered marketing mode and, and fucking disgraced the game and, and taught a lot of dog shit, um, which is unfortunate, right? But that is what it is. So in group theory, you're, you're ignoring the target, you're opening the group. The way I do it, I come in, hey, sorry, sorry to interrupt you guys. I just want to meet you real quick. I'm John, right? Hey, what's up? You guys should meet my friend here, introduce Josh or introduce my other wingman. Now he's talking to the friends. I'm talking to the girl I want to talk to, and then I'm trying to isolate within the first two to three minutes. And by I said, I mean, remove her from the group over to the bar or over in another part of the venue. That's where I'm posting up, getting more physical with her, getting into a makeout, talking about how we should leave together, in which case she's going to be giving me objections. And then I work through the objections. So I prefer to open the target and then isolate fairly quickly and then get into more heavy escalation within isolation, okay? Mystery says, ignore the target, open the group, and then neg the target, and then show that she's like winning you over, and then isolate the target, All right? So there are some similarities, but um, don't open the group and ignore the target, okay? I think that was wrong, right? So don't peacock dressing like a circus freak and don't, um, open the group and ignore the target. I just think like, it's just not very efficient or effective, right? You want to, you want to be talking to and gaming the girl that you're interested in. So like from an opportunity cost standpoint, if you're just like talking to the group for a while, you're just kind of burning time. Like, again, you have to look at these things in terms of like really what the term, the proper technical term is expected value. Otherwise known as EV. That's how you make calculations for moves in poker. That's how you make calculations for moves in chess. What is the upside prediction based on all the information I have at this point in the game? And then that's how you make your next move. And as your skill increases, you can make those calculations better and they become more automatic and you're making more of the better moves more of the time, which increases your probabilities for success and moving from level to level through the process. So that's essentially what game is. It's making more good moves more often and, and closer to the optimized moves. So, Let's say that um, you're in doing this group theory, you're, you're speaking to the friends for like 10, 15 minutes. That's just like dead time. And there's no point in doing that. It's the same thing when RST says, go warm up by talking to dudes and fat chicks for the first half of the night, because you can't pull in the first half of the night, which is completely wrong. I've pulled in the first half of the night at least as much, if not more than the second half, because it's a little bit easier to sell to get the girl to go and come back than to go and not come back, right? Which is a little bit scarier all things considered, there's just a different strategy. 
So I teach guys on bootcamp how to pull the very first girl they talk to. You don't need to warm up either because that's the flawed, remember the flawed model of thinking that you're below 100 out of 100 and that you need to build state so that you're up to a level of competence. That All that's doing is introducing a self-handicap. Don't try to warm up, okay? Always think that you're on point. Always think you're at 100 out of 100. Bring your A game on the first girl that you talk to in the club. And if your game is strong, you will have a decent chance of pulling that first girl you talk to. Like Jesse, the coach of my team, he's like, I need to be careful which girls I approach because I almost always pull like the first one, two, or third girl that I approach. And I don't want to pull a girl that's not up like as hot as other ones that I could have could have pulled, right? These are quality problems to have, but that's to show you like what kind of considerations are going on there, right? So you don't need warm-ups and you shouldn't be burning time talking to the group. Okay. So that kind of covers that one and in terms of negs they come from like the wrong frame it comes from the frame of like let me do this little trick let me say a backhanded insult so that i can try to bring the girl's value down but the problem is is a lot of times it's obvious and a lot of times you can look like a dick right so like i remember like one of the first nights out doing mystery method i was just like there was a really hot girl i was talking to and i'm like oh your nose looks like a bunny when you laugh and you're supposed to bring out dryer lint. This is really a thing. You bring out lint from the dryer, like the fucking like little cloth that gets collected like when clothes are getting dried, that like ball of fucking cotton and lint, right? I don't know how to fucking describe if you don't know what lint is. It's like stuff that comes off on the clothes. You're supposed to wear it, bring that out in your pocket and then like pull it off of her dress and be like, oh, look what you had on your dress so that she feels embarrassed. Okay, but like, a lot of it's like too contrived, right? It's, it's almost on the level, not quite, but it's almost on the level of like Todd pretending he doesn't like the girl to push pull and to disqualify. Like imagine you're speaking to a girl, you're having fun, right? You're a guy that bangs chicks all the time. And then suddenly you're like, okay, time to pretend like I don't like her. See the problem? Now it's like you're going into acting mode, okay? Oh, well, I don't know if this will work out with you and me. Uh, you're like a sister to me. You're like a friend, blah, blah, blah. And the girl's like, what and they're not stupid right it's very 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 hard to do that congruently because it's not what's in your heart it's used as a trick that's the problem it comes from the wrong frame of like using reaching into a tool but that's why i always describe it like reaching into a tool bag of tricks and being like now i'm going to tell you like i thought your nails were real and hopefully you lose value and now you th you think that um i'm cooler and you're also demonstrating higher value which is correct so you're like making yourself look the best you can while while simultaneously bringing her value down it's just not necessary girls will get offended it comes and it comes from the wrong frame Th those are the two biggest problems with negs okay is that it's it's hard to do it correctly and it's not it's not needed what you should do what the correct way to do it is you assume compliance you assume contraction sorry you assume compliance you assume attraction and when you're faced with non-compliance or objections if and only when those things come up you deal with them in turn through objection handling or, or proper dealing with non-compliance. And then you make the decision to cut bait on the interaction or continue based on kind of a back of the napkin calculation of making a real-time probabilistic assessment of the odds of her pulling, which is again, just like an EV thing, right? Like if you've got a bad hand in poker and it seems like you're not gonna win, you wanna fold. If you have a good hand and it seems like you have a good probability of winning, then you wanna bet. So it's the same in pickup, right? If you are in an interaction and it looks like a dead end or a low probability situation, you want to get the fuck out of there. If it seems like it's going well, you want to try to pull. And there's ways to figure these things out and, and different information coming at all times that changes the equation. But there's no need to like go in and, and use tricks to tell a girl that she's not that great and stuff like that. It's going to look rude in some cases. Most guys can't do it congruently, meaning it's going to look like an act and also again it's just not necessary right and it just comes from a, it comes from the wrong frame okay now let's talk about the seven hour rule mystery says that it takes four to ten hours <clears throat> of comfort building with an average of seven before you bang the girl uh an average of seven hours of comfort before you bang the girl so she doesn't get buyer's remorse so the term buyer's remorse has to do with <clears throat> purchasing a product like on a whim and then the next day regretting it or, or later that day regretting it so um
<laughs> I just read this again. Tate comparing himself to Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan. The guy's so delusional. Like, let me show you guys <clears throat> a picture someone sent me recently. This embodies who Tate really is, this picture. This says it all in a nutshell. Okay. This is <laughs> the top G. Okay. Just a little dork. Just a little nerd. Okay. Just because he shaved his head and started wearing indoor sunglasses and started pretending to be cool on the internet never made him cool. Okay. He's comparing himself to conquerors and stuff. It's looking very likely that he's a rapist and woman beater. Okay, I don't, I'm not saying for sure definitively, but when a lot of girls are accusing a guy of rape, and, and this was even before he got popular, mind you. It's not like, oh, he's popular and a lot of girls are trying to unite to take him down. No, he had been accused of rape many different years in the UK, in fucking Romania. Like Even a new girl just came forward, <clears throat> but a lot of these girls came forward before he was even popular. Okay, is part of the reason why he moved to Romania. Because he 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 went on record saying that he could do whatever he wanted and they're less strict on rape laws. Yeah, not shady at all, right? Anyways, uh yeah, he he's an embarrassment to himself and and to masculinity and and what what it means to be like a true alpha male and all that stuff. This is a guy performing on a stage and he'll be uh, thrown behind bars soon is is my prediction with high chance mind you is what i think is the outcome there <clears throat> the seven hour rule okay mystery was on to something buyer's remorse is a real thing there's a societal narrative that tells a girl that if she bangs a guy that she just met too soon before she's gotten to know him very well that she could be viewed as a slut by society by her friends that found out she could even view herself as a slut you could view her as a slut, even though you were part of the situation and you, you wanted to bang her anyways. Now you could be judging her. And some of them even go so far as to think like God is judging them. Okay, that's a thing too. Uh, so <clears throat> it's a real thing, right? It's a real concern. Let me pop up. This is the, the seven hour rule we're talking about. Okay. Now, He was right that you need a certain amount of comfort before you bang them or they'll get buyer's remorse. But what he's wrong about is it's not a quantitative amount of time that has to pass, right? So you don't need to wait literally four to 10 hours, which is unrealistic. If you're pulling for a nightclub, you're not going to have four to 10 hours to build comfort. If you're on a date for an hour and you bring the girl back home, you don't want to have to wait till the third or fourth date to bang, nor should you have to, okay? The correct way to look at this is there's a qualitative amount of comfort. Okay, so it's like, here's the amount of comfort needed. He was saying it takes like seven hours to get there, typically like four to 10, depending on, on the range, which was a good way to describe it, but that's far too long and you don't need some fixed amount of time. You just need a qualitative amount of comfort, meaning like an amount of comfort. Not It's not based on the time period spent together it's based on the amount of comfort you can generate before you bang so you can generate that requisite amount of comfort very quickly and I've, I've perfected a whole bunch of ways to massively import comfort which i'll i'll go through some of them now so <clears throat> i i made a post in 2012 dating myself here a bit on rc nation that was called importing comfort on credit and what that means is you can make statements to a girl, which I still do in the modern day. I feel a really great connection with you. It doesn't need to be totally bullshit. Like you're often going to feel chemistry and connection with, with a lot of girls. So I say, I feel a really good connection with you. Um, it feels like I've known you for a long time. And I treat them as if they've been a pre-existing fuck buddy for months. On the very first interaction and also on the very first date and on the very first hookup, I'm treating them as if they've been a pre-existing rotation girl for a while, okay? And that allows them to feel comfortable, not awkward, not as shy, and like this is something you guys have always been doing, right? 
what they don't want is to think like, okay, he got what he wanted. Maybe I won't hear from this guy again. Maybe he's going to try to use me for sex, um, blah, 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 blah. So there's a bunch of things that I do. I'm not going to go into the full strategies here, but there's a bunch of things I do and say and frames that I set that are like very anti one night stand and almost like future pacing that we're going to hang out a lot more. I say, oh, I can tell I'm going to see you a lot more. We have a really good connection. Um, I can tell we're going to hang out a lot, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like making a bunch of frames and statements around the fact that we connected really well. It feels like we've known each other for a long time. We have a unique bond. And I, and I reinforce that by saying, oh, I like that you're into this and this and this. I am too. I like that you have these qualities, blah, blah, blah. And I, I state non-physical, non-sexual qualities I like about her that we both connect on and that I appreciate. <clears throat> And I also set up the next date before the end of the first date finishes, right? Or before the the, the night finishes, if it was a club pull, <clears throat> I set up the next hangout so she knows I want to see her again, okay? And again, I, I set, the, set these frames. We're going to hang out a bunch more, and I, I show her appreciation for non-physical, non-sexual things. And you can get to that qualitative amount of comfort and build this nice bond and have them fall for you without having it take four to 10 hours or seven hours. So he's right about the concept of a threshold requisite amount of comfort needed so that they don't get buyer's remorse. However, he was wrong about the fact that it takes four to 10 hours with an average of seven. But that was like a nice estimate, I guess, doing the traditional way. If you're just doing like traditional get to know you things, I'm doing like comfort shortcuts to avoid buyer's remorse. I'm doing comfort shortcuts to fill up that requisite amount of comfort quickly, very quickly build. I, I have ways to, to quickly build a shitload of rapport and comfort very early, like even in the interaction <clears throat> and that suffices so that you don't need to, to put in a whole bunch of hours because it's not uh, efficient or realistic to be spending seven hours with every single girl before you bang them. If that was the case, uh, my lay count would be way lower. Um, most of the girls that I bang, it happens on the first date or I pull them from a, a nightclub, cold approach typically, right? So I'm pulling home with, in, the, you know, in the past bunch of years. It used to be five to 20 minute pulls, but the odds of actually closing it at the house would be lower when you're pulling that quickly. Now in the modern day, it's more like 15 to 40 minute pulls and the odds are very high that they'll close. <clears throat> and on dates, I close like, you know, upwards of 75, 80% on the first date because you can never account for the ones that are prude or want to wait or have a hard rule about not doing anything on the first date. So don't listen to anyone who's claiming 100% close rate or even 90% plus it's not happening, not possible. Um, okay, so that covers that one, all right? What else do I have on the list? I have routines. Okay, let's talk about routines. So routines are like little gambits, right? Like a, a, a famous one is like from the book, the game is like who lies more men or women. And it's supposed to be like, you know, like a topic that people find interesting that the girl can say a bunch about that you can say a bunch about. And that kind of fixes the problem of what do I say when I'm in the interaction? Or what do I what do I talk about? Right? And, and the theory goes that instead of just talking about random <clears throat> bullshit, Instead, you speak about stuff that's interesting. So, you know, you can say, like, here's another routine. Um, hey, I just saw the craziest thing outside. There were two girls fighting and one of their boobs popped out. And like mystery would stress that like when you talk, when you deliver the routine, that you like focus on the emotional impact that it will have on the girl because girls are emotional creatures. They're not thinking, and I'm not saying girls are not logical. We just process information differently. So I, I, luckily I'm informed from like a biological and, and anatomical perspective from the amount of neuroscience and just general uh, books that I read about, you know, how the brain works and stuff like that. But men have four times more gray matter, which is responsible for local and analytical processing. That's why men <clears throat> predominantly excel in the fields of chess and poker and logic and mathematics 
and anything with like a hardcore analytical thing. Like if you look at a lot of like the, you know, the people that innovated in, in technology and the, the, a lot of it was men because our brains are designed to do analytical and local processing. We have four times more advantage. And if you look back in evolutionary times, that makes sense because men were hunting, they were developing tools, they were solving problems. Okay, whereas the women were traditionally back in the tribe socializing, which leads to them having 10 times more gray matter, or sorry, white matter, which is responsible for interneuronal connections, which is responsible for uh, verbal and social tasks. Okay, so they specialize there. So I've always made the point that if you took an 18 year old girl with like no socializing experience, she's going to have much higher social acuity than a guy like myself who's done tens of thousands of cold approaches. It's simply based on how her brain is wired. So girls can see right through very quickly and easily any kind of incongruence when a guy is pretending to be someone that he's not, when he's trying to be the cool guy, the clever guy, the smart guy, the witty guy, the funny guy. Any type of performance trying to be a certain type of guy or act a certain type of way that you think she's going to like or censoring yourself in a certain way because you don't think she'll like that, they pick up on that very quickly. And that's why, it's precisely why most, almost all other strategies don't work that you hear about on YouTube. Okay, like a guy like Todd, for instance, when you're pretending you don't like the girl, they see through that shit instantly. When you're saying lame ass things where you think you know about her with cold reads, they see through that instantly. Okay, when you're doing this like contrived push pulling, they see through that instantly instantly okay because it's not you it's the same thing with like witty openers it's the same thing with witty lines and when you see me critique all these guys on some of what's funny when like james tusk is asking a girl simply on her cell phone which is a normal activity if she's a secret space agent from the moon because she's literally t standing there texting or he saw her wobbling around on her peg legs okay it was the same interaction and when he finds out that, or when he says she might look Middle Eastern, he's asking her if she takes magic carpet rides, which is like a racist, like Aladdin reference, I guess. <laughs> and then asks her if she, uh, if she smokes hookah, which again is like another racist stereotype. And the girl's like, oh, I'm Russian. But, you know, the point is, and, and why that's a good example is like, this is like a good looking guy, like wearing a blazer. Like all he has to do is not be a fucking weirdo and just speak normally authentically. But since he's like doing the London day game model, okay, and he's friends with little cocksuckers like Troy Francis and Modern Life Dating, he's got to be Mr. Circus Performer. And you saw the girls, like in that particular interaction I'm referencing, you saw the girl's reaction is like, what the fuck, right? And she's like, do you do this all the time? Do you always say these things? And it's like, look, everyone, this isn't working. The girl is repulsed. The girl is weirded out. The girl thinks this is strange because it is strange. Someone that's texting shouldn't be asked if they're a secret space agent from the moon. Yes, it's funny, but it's also dumb and shows that his game blows. Okay, but the point of referencing that is that anyone that does anything resembling that, which is pretty much everyone, is incredibly flawed. Okay, and that is because the girl can see right through it. And, and we can't even, as men, we can't even appreciate how like accurately and precisely and, and easily they can see through it. I know because I'm like a data collector and an optimizer and analyzer. And I've seen tens and tens of thousands of social interactions. I have 18,500 phone, 18, phone numbers in my phone. I'll show you guys. I, I show this to, to show proof of that. And people are like, how do you know? If you have an Android phone and you go to contacts, it tells you the total number of contacts at the top, 18,578, okay? And that's just phone numbers I've gotten. That's almost all random girls, right? Like I, like I have <laughs> friends and family and stuff around the world, um, but that's mostly random girls in there, okay? And I can't look at my phone. There's like a million fucking messages there. Um, but what's interesting regarding the, the intelligence of men and women right? Interestingly enough, we score relatively equal on general intelligence tests. So it's not that men are smarter just because we excel at analytical things or that women are smarter because they excel at social and verbal things. It's just that our intelligence strengths in general by gender have different strengths and weaknesses. Okay.
so the point there is that the tying this back into the, the, the discussion is that women are focused on the emotional aspects of a story, for instance. So let me give you an example of like, because I still do lots of demonstrations of higher value DHVs. Back when I was working at Lockheed Martin, okay, when I was like DJing parties and stuff like house parties, um, and, and I started I moved into like smaller clubs and medium sized clubs and bigger clubs. But I was DJing this one house party. I just bought a brand new sports car, like all on like a payment plan. Like it was like 60 months of payments I saw in the, in the fucking book, like a five year payment plan. But I just bought this brand new sports car it was really fast. And I had met the, it was like the first 10 that I had banged. Okay. It was like late count, like 54. I had banged a 10. The first 10, it was like a stacked, it was like tan, blonde, fake tits, beautiful face, nice ass, flat stomach, like perfect. Right. And like this Polish background, this was in Philadelphia. And I brought this chick to a party where I was DJing and we came in the sports car and all this stuff. And so I thought, how can I turn this? Cause I was creating DHV stories. How can I turn this into a story demonstrating higher value where I can convey the emotional components of the story well, but also not brag. Okay. And, and I actually got my car keyed while I was in the fucking event. Okay. When I was DJing this and guys were like hitting on the girl I brought, she was wearing like hardly any, you know, she was wearing like, like almost like fully naked. It had like something that was almost like the equivalent of pasties on her nipples. It was like perfect body. So like guys were like hitting on her while I was DJ and she's like, Oh, I'm here with him. But look at how I turned this into a story. Okay. I said, I started working this into interactions. Oh, it was so shitty the other day. I was DJing this fucking party. I was like on top of the world. Like everybody was going crazy. And I got back to my car with my equipment and someone had just fucking keyed my brand new sports car. And, and it was like such a letdown. I went from like up here down to here. And I was already annoyed because I had brought this girl who's like a model and like everybody was hitting on her all night. And I, I was already like sick of all that. And then someone fucking keyed my brand new car. And I, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like in shock. Now, look at how that story is different than someone like Andrew Tate, who's like, what color is your Bugatti? Right. And it's like obnoxious. And it's like, look. And the girls don't care, okay? Um, but with this, it demonstrates pre-selection. Oh, he's hanging out with a model. She's probably hotter than me. He must get hot girls. Oh, he's DJing events. He must have a lot of social proof. He must know a lot of people. He must have access to a lot of women. He just bought a new sports car. He must be successful. He has a, like a well-rounded life, blah, blah, blah. Right? But notice the story didn't have any aspects of bragging and i'm not like hey did you know i drive this car it's told in a way where i'm i'm telling a story and the focus is on like this bad thing that happened to me and they can imagine right especially when i'm being expressive and like changing my pitch and all this stuff they can they can experience like how i was up on top of the world instead of being like yeah i was playing this party and, I, and then afterwards like i came back and someone fucked in my car and that sucked no i'm telling in a way the mystery trained not directly, but through his book and his teachings, he trained me how to speak about things in that way. So it would resonate much stronger with how a woman's brain is built, which is kind of a very key point, right? He would just stress like men focus on like the facts and the details of the, of the stories. Right? Like if you're telling your guy friend, like you might tell it differently, but, but women are like sensing like the emotional impact, right? And, and how it makes you feel and stuff like that. And so I'd really play up those aspects. So, the reason why I just gave such a big discussion around that is because there's been a lot of, you know, back and forth in the community over the years, routines versus natural game, you know, blah, 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 like which one's better. Now, routines, if they sound like scripted or canned, aren't going to come off well. Like there's, there's a whole bunch of like, you have to have like the delivery right and it has to sound natural and congruent and all this stuff. Okay. Like an example they use is if you were to watch like a stand up comic on TV, for instance. And this is fucking awesome, by the way. I, lo I love mystery. So we're like going through some of the technical details more in depth. Um, we're over 100 people now on the thing coming up in an hour. So definitely hit the, the like button if you haven't yet. They said in the book that like, say you watched someone that was like a famous comic, just like nailing it with like these awesome jokes. And then you like memorized some of the jokes and you went and said them to your friends and like nobody laughed and it wasn't funny. It's because there's like timing, there's like delivery, there's like intonation. There's like these little subtleties because he's told the joke over and over and over and over. And he understands every little piece of it. 
and he's like congruent with it versus someone that's just repeating the verbals. Okay, now there's a, there's a huge difference there. A lot of guys try to do these things as outer game tactics when in reality, it just needs to be like internalized and congruent with who they are. So, and, and you know, the idea was that you like practice the routines a bunch before they're like in the can, which means like you now have it down pat. And even, you know, this is going to maybe shock some of you, but even in the modern day, okay, I'm sitting at 1,662 lay count, countless other non-sex hookups that I didn't track. 18,500 phone numbers, pretty fucking extreme stats. I have rough outlines for the types of stories that I tell in almost every fucking interaction, every date, et cetera. Does that make the game boring or robotic? No, it doesn't. But it gives you a nice framework to reliably trigger those attraction switches that are biologically hardwired into every single girl to create this impression that you are the full package guy. That's a very important point. Okay, what you want, and I tell this to my clients, what you want when the girl comes away from an interaction or from a date is you want to be hearing feedback like, wow, so you're basically like the perfect guy. Wow, so you're basically like the full package. Like, wow, like you're not like any other guy I've met before. You don't want her going back to her friends and being like, yeah, I just had a date with John. It was okay. I don't know if I'll see him again. You want her being like, wow, like this guy is like awesome this guy seems like he has way more shit going on that he's way more confident his bedroom skills are the best i've ever had he made me come a shitload. Uh, i can't stop thinking about him and i create that effect like that's what i've fucking driven every fucking little piece of effort in the game towards right so like when i hang out with a girl they get hooked really fucking quick right and that's not to be like oh you know look at me it's just that I, I, I like almost everything I'm doing and saying is tactical and calculated. But a lot of it's automatic at this point, right? Most of it, if not all. And that's what happens over time. So like you're, you're training your verbals to do different utilities, but just, okay, like, like in the very early days, like this would make, kind of like make this make sense. In the very early days, I would... <laughs> John Anthony Lifestyle was born, then Josh Anthony Lifestyle. <laughs> um, by the way, for those of you that came on late, Josh is confirmed as one of the coaches for running the Miami live program. We're doing a live immersion. Um, it will be me, Josh, who's at 700 plus lay count, and then Connor on our team, who's at 600 plus lay count. Uh, the three of us in Miami, July 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. There literally is one spot left, and that's not a marketing gimmick. As I said earlier, we had the eighth guy sent up this weekend. There's about 12 guys. It's like fully transparent on this shit. Even the guys that were signing up, I'm like, yeah, there's like a, li a list of guys that are trying to get funds together or make logistics work for that scheduling and, and this and that for those dates. Um, so we're reaching back out to all those people again, letting them all know there's one spot. We're telling you guys now there's one spot. Literally eight guys have paid and there's one guy or one spot remaining. Okay. And that was full before, but there, somebody had a conflict come up. Had to, had to uh, change. So, okay. Um, in the early days, I would have a, a printout and be like, here's a list of openers. Here's a list of routines. Here's a list of negs. And I would have like mysteries, like structure of the interaction. And I'd just be sitting on the, on the bus or the cab or whatever, memorizing this shit, trembling oftentimes with the paper, like literally, because I was scared out of my mind. <laughs> like it was incredibly uncomfortable as someone with social, with social anxiety disorder, general anxiety disorder depression at points more so in high school um obsessing compulsive sort of looping thoughts to go walk up and talk to strangers okay i had trouble speaking in class would turn red i had trouble speaking to people i saw in the hall i couldn't even maintain eye contact and i was very soft-spoken so this was like incredibly terrifying to go and have to speak to strangers who could insult me or, or laugh at me or whatever right so that took a lot of fucking resolve to go and do that but i felt a lot more comfortable having pre-prepared shit to talk about anyone can memorize routines and openers and stuff like that so that really helped in the early days to get over some of those things it's it's less scary when you know okay i'm going to go talk about this shit now i'm going to talk about this shit now now the point is i still do that in the modern day it's not full fucking stories rehearsed but it's like general themes 
I talk about how I traveled around the world. I talk about how I speak five languages, how I have four degrees, how I do martial arts, right? With Muay Thai and, and Krav Maga and boxing and jujitsu. I talk about how I go to the gym. I talk about how I DJ events, DJ parties. I talk about how I've dated a lot of beautiful girls around the world, but this is all worked into stories, but this is the types of stuff that I talk about and what it's doing indirectly is like flipping a bunch of attraction switches so that they have no choice but to be really into you. But at the same time, I'm congruent with all these things. It's all real stuff that's happened or is happening in my life about how I run a company, right? Um, and, and the point is, the point is, what I'm trying to say here isn't to be like, you know, unless you have lots of shit going on, you're at a big disadvantage or you're fucked. You can frame whatever it is you have going on. Like I, I have every student send me a list of their accomplishments, interests, skills, hobbies, and cool experiences. <clears throat> and I use that to personally write their Tinder bios. But I also tell them to review that list and be proud of what they've accomplished and what they bring to the table and what makes them unique from other men. And regardless of who you are, you can like present yourself in a way that's going to be the most appealing as possible in the eyes of society. And, and it's also a lot of really subtle things, right? It's not just like who can give the best resume. It's, is, are things not a big deal to you, right? Is, is it, no matter what happens, is it not a big deal? Are you someone with like a big agenda that, that like has to get laid, that has to fuck this girl, or is it not a big deal and you don't care, right? Are you able to let, like when she gives you shit or like challenges you, are you able to let that roll off and deal with it in turn without like getting all like fucking crazy? And, and on and on. There's a whole bunch of things that go into the equation. But being able to like structure your verbals in a way, at least with conversational outlines, um, I've found is a component amongst like all the most elite advanced guys I know. Right. We're not just usually going in and, and talking about like fully random stuff the whole time. Keep in mind we're we're speaking with no filter and whatever comes up comes up. But there's like an, you know, if the girl's wearing a hot outfit, well, if her nipples are showing, I'm gonna comment on that every time. If her fucking ass is popping out of her dress, I'm going to comment on that, right? <clears throat> I'm not afraid to talk to them sexually and, and non-platonically because, again, I'm treating them like they're an existing fuck buddy, as if we've already been fucking. The idea of the, the, the question of whether or not I'm going to bang them is not a question. It's, it's already solved before I approach or before I go on a date with a new online game lead. It's a foregone conclusion, meaning there's no doubt in my mind that I will not fuck this girl. Does that mean that I fuck every girl? No. Does that mean that I can get every girl in the club? No, but that's my mindset and that's the best mindset. There's no disadvantage to that. Okay. If you think that you're not good enough for girls above a certain threshold, now you've handicapped yourself. If you think you're not good enough for some reason or reasons, which is how almost every guy's thinking, you've now handicapped yourself. Okay. And now not only do you have like all the normal challenges, but you're fighting an uphill battle and you're telegraphing to the girl that you're low value. If you don't believe in your own value, it's very difficult for them to believe in it. Okay, if, if she sees her value is here because she's hot and you come in and you're acting like you're way below her, okay, either because you're trying to use tricks to win her over, like most pickup guys on the internet, including all the coaches, or you're trying to neg her to bring her value down, again, signaling that you're lower than her, or you're you're trying to say a bunch of like routines and use you know do like contrived ways to convince her to like you or be the clever guy, funny guy, witty. You know, I always go through those examples. You are inherently expressing that you doubt your own value and that you think you're lower value than her. That's not attractive to them. Okay, they're gonna. You, you can have the best verbals in the world. Okay, you can be a Chad. You name it. Not gonna help that much. Why? Because inherently you don't think you're good enough, okay? So you're turning yourself into the equivalent of like a fat girl if you were to switch positions, right? Let's say that, you know, we're attracted to like physical attractiveness in a woman. Luckily, as men, women are attracted to survival and replication value. And so if you're not that physically attractive, you still have great chances. That's the good news. The bad news is if you're lacking confidence, you're gonna appear or lack, you're having doubt in your own self-worth, you're going to appear like a fat girl to them. We're not attracted to fat girls. Most people wouldn't want to end up with one unless you're a red pill dating coach. But do you want to come across as the fat girl or do you want to come across as the stunner? 
right? It's all about how you how you're carrying yourself, and you have to know how to move things forward properly. But the point is here is that if you're just reciting like fully canned routines to use things as lines, it's going to be incongruent. However, it can be advantageous, and I still do this in the modern day, to have loose outlines of stories or loose topics of stories that can accomplish different strategic and tactical objectives that you're mostly free-forming, but you have like go-to types of things to talk about in order to give you a better position. So routines as they exist on their own in, in terms of full memorization, not the best routines in the form of loose story outlines to have things to fall back on and accomplish objectives. Yes. Okay. So it's kind of a long discussion there, but hopefully that made sense. Now, um, pop in the chat, other areas, Mr. Method, if you want me to get my feedback on, we covered why I think peacocking is too extreme and unnecessary, why negs are unnecessary and come from the wrong frame, why group theory is wrong, aka talking to the group and ignoring the target. I believe that it's a better move, all things considered, to speak to the target directly, assume attraction, and deal with non-compliance objections if and when they come up. Uh, routines, fully canned, not the best. Loose outlines of stories, good. Okay, and you're mixing in like just full, no filter, um, vibing and stacking topics and conversational threads along with these loose outlines of stories. Um, the only other ones I really listed down that I want to talk about regarding mystery method in, in ways that it went a little bit wrong is he doesn't really talk about objection handling. I think objection handling is, is one of the most important pieces in the game. In cold approach, you're going to have objections to on the opener, potentially. Any place where there's a compliance test, you can have non-compliance and or objections. So they could have reasons they don't want to talk to you, reasons they don't want to isolate with you, reasons they don't want to kiss you yet, reasons they don't want to go home with you. When you text them, they might have reasons for not meeting up with you or for not replying. When you ask them out on a date, they might have reasons to not meet you on a date. When you go on the date, they might have reasons to not come home with you. They almost always will. When you go to hook up, they might have reasons to not hook up. When you want to see them again, there might be reasons to not see you again. Through the whole process, there are objections, okay? A lot of guys, if not most, think that objections means that she's not interested. Instead, just as it is in sales, they should be expected and they are the norm. That's a very important point. If the girl is interested, she's going to be giving objections. That's counterintuitive, but it's the same thing in sales. Sales 101, if you like give a product pitch to someone and they're like silent, they're probably not interested if they're like, well, how do I know that that thing's going to work? Or, you know, what do I, what, blah, blah, blah. If they're asking questions and raising objections, that's pieces of skepticism that they have that when resolved, open the door for them to buy. For the dating game, there's going to be reasons they have. Let's, let's talk about pulling from a club, for instance. Okay. There's going to be reasons they have for not going home with you. I've identified 14 major ones. Just throwing them out at random, and I'm sure most of you have heard these if you've gone and done any kind of cold approach, is I can't leave my friends. That's the number one most common objection. I can't leave my friends. Hey, I live close by. We should go have a drink at my place. Oh, I'd love to, but I can't leave my friends. I'd love to, but I have to be up early. I'd love to, but I can't come unless she comes or unless the whole group comes. We just got here, so I can't leave yet. We have to stay till the end to see the headline DJ. How do I know it's safe to go with you? What if you're a murderer? What if you're a serial killer? Right now, that sounds crazy, right? But if you've been out, you've heard that a lot. Okay. Um, what are the other ones? Yeah, on the weekdays, they're going to typically say that to be up early because they have work in the morning. There's a way to deal with that. Oh, I'm not that kind of girl. Okay, the hookup objection. Remember the anti-slot defense. I'm not that kind of girl. If I go home with you, that means we're not. That doesn't mean we're going to have sex. I don't do stuff like that, right? And for each one of these, I've done extensive, extensive, extensive testing, split testing, data collection, analysis, revision. And I've come up with what I have found to be the best responses for each one of those 14 objections. So I arm my clients in advance, in advance with the optimal replies. 
So when you go to take a girl home and you hear objection A and B, you know responses A and B because you have them memorized. It's the same way when he trains the sales team in Wolf of Wall Street, Leonardo DiCaprio, playing Jordan Belfort. He says, but they don't trust you guys. And why should they? You're a bunch of sleazy salesmen. So what do you say? Oh, I need to check on my wife. I need to check with... The, he's like, they got to check with their wife. They got to check with the fucking tooth fairy. It doesn't matter. When they say this, you say this. When they say this, you say this. Right? And... Um, where are these objections coming from? You're a stranger. The girl doesn't want to be in a one on one awkward situation where the guy's expecting sex. And then if she decides she doesn't want to, maybe he gets angry. So you tell them you don't have any sexual expectations. That also takes the pressure off and allows things to unfold naturally, which is how they want it to, to go, anyways. Okay. You can resolve their safety concerns with other methods. You can resolve their having to get up early concerns with other methods. But when you know in advance all the different ways this interaction is going to go and you know exactly what to do, no matter which way it goes, you're going to be finding success most of the time or at least giving yourself the best fighting chances. And that in itself is the essence of game. It's knowing what to do in every type of situation, especially the most common ones, to make things go your way and go successfully. And that is where the strategy comes in, okay? Um, in Sun Tzu, in the book, The Art of War, he said the battle is won before it's fought. So what I'm doing with my training methodologies is teaching guys in advance, when this happens, do this. When this happens, do this. That's what Leads Machine is for texting and online game messaging. There's going to be, over text, there's going to be comfort objections for meeting up, safety objections, logistics objections, hookup objections. I can't come unless I bring a friend. I can't come unless we meet closer to my house. I can't come straight to your house. I don't go to a stranger's house. Every day. I know what they all are. I know how to deal with them all. And I teach guys how to deal with them all. So instead of thinking she's not interested when you hear an objection, just know that that's totally normal and part of the process and part of the dance. And you'll be equipped with and armed with the best way to respond. Mystery doesn't talk about objection handling. Nobody does, which is mind boggling. It's literally the most or one of the most important pieces of the game. Um, and the other piece that I wanted to speak to is freeze outs. Okay, the idea with freeze outs, there's something called last minute resistance. And I'm gonna, after this, I'm going to go through all the, or all the, I'm going to just try to plow through some comments. Um, last minute resistance, otherwise known as LMR, is something that happens when, you know, the traditional picture is like you get a girl home and you're going through the escalation process and she stops you when you're physically escalating and she's like oh no we can't do that or we can't go further now the idea is with last minute resistance is that you do two steps forward one step back okay so the the idea is the way that they teach it is that you're advancing things forward and then when you hit the point of last minute resistance then you take a step back and then wash, rinse, repeat, and keep trying to advance it forward. That's traditional game knowledge. Um, I don't speak about dealing with LMR publicly because feminists misconstrue the words and they interpret it incorrectly as if you're trying to manipulate or coerce a girl that doesn't want to have sex into having sex. Or like, you know, they paint it as like sexually assaulting the girl. Like the girl's telling you no, and you're taking that to mean not yet, okay? Now, a brief discussion about where LMR comes from, it's coming from skipping steps. So the escalation process, from the point you open all the way to the end, and Mystery has graphs of this in, in the book that he co-wrote with uh, Chris Odom, who goes by Love Drop. It's called Revelations, the book they wrote. It's really, really good. One of the only books I recommend, the Mystery Method in that book, Revelations. Um, but again, my stuff is far better and beyond, but those were two of the best books prior to my stuff. Um, and, and still, I would say those are the next two best resources after my stuff, given all the other dog shit that's come in and none of it's, none of it's good. Um, that's why I speak out against it. But he said, like, he shows graphs, which are like, you know, it's amazing and, and beautiful to me because I'm like an analytical mathematical guy. And he shows like the seduction process and like, various stages and all and how the, how it's increasing but the whole idea is that 
the, the smoother your game and the better your game, the more effective your game, you're doing a lot of little steps. Because keep in mind, any relativistic jump, okay, let's look on the y-axis. This is like compliance needed, okay? When you're going like this, it's a bunch of little steps. So when you get to sex, okay, it's just one little step to get to sex because you've already sexualized, you've already been physical, you've already like probably made out with her, and you, you've advanced things in that direction. You set the frames that it's not platonic. So when you go to have sex, it's just another little jump, and it's not a big deal. And the odds of it going down are very high. If she's not ready yet or she has a principle about it, you totally back off. You say, not a problem. So Alamar doesn't become a thing. It becomes a thing when guys have these platonic conversations leading to nowhere. Maybe they learn some little tricks about how to get a girl home because they watch my videos on how to properly pull. And then there's like this jump. It's like a spike needed in compliance. Okay, a lot. this is where a lot of like the kiss gets rejected too because the guy's like, okay, I've got her back home now, like time to make my big move. Your big move in graphical terms equates to a compliance jump. And the bigger the compliance jump and the more steps that you skipped, it's like a almost direct correlation, potentially even an exponential correlation, negative correlation to the probability that they will comply. And maybe that was a little confusing. So think of it, think of it this way. Hold on one sec here. Liz just got back from yoga. Um, the better your game is, the smaller little steps you have. Okay, let me give you one little lesson here. Mystery had something called hoop theory. Okay. And hoop theory is like, how easy is it for girls to comply with different things? Now, um, his example in his book is that if you were to walk up to a girl sitting at a bar stool and you were to say, hey, let me have your seat. She's going to be like, no, what the fuck? Right? Big move. Big compliance jump. If instead you go up to the girl at the bar stool, you reach out your hand, she takes your hand, you have her stand up, you twirl her around and you switch positions with her, and then you sit down at her bar stool. You've now effectively done the same thing, except you've taken this big compliance test and you broke it into smaller pieces. That applies throughout the whole game. Okay. So, like every compliance test, instead of making it some big jump, you make it baby stepped into smaller steps. And that's what I've built throughout my whole system. What that does is it still gets you from point A to B, but it gives you way better chances because these small steps have much higher chances of compliance. The smaller the step, the much higher the chance of compliance. So it's like a slippery slope, but a bunch of those small steps over time get you, <laughs> it's always fucking backwards. It gets you from here to here, okay? But guys with bad game and that are making a lot of mistakes try to do these big jumps. Then they've got LMR. Or they do a big jump here, and then the girl won't come home with them. They do a big jump back at the house. They've got LMR, right? A, a lot of game problems and issues boil down to asking for too much compliance because you didn't build the frames right and you didn't advance things with small enough steps. And that big, and like, like give you, I'll give you even an example that just popped in my mind of like an advanced point. I had a student that was at 150 lay count. He was like not closing at a proper rate. He was getting a lot of girls home. We got a lot of stuff worked out. So he was getting a lot of girls back home and he was closing at, at like a fairly low rate. And I said, what are you doing when you have the girl back at your house? And he's like, well, we make out on the couch and then I lead her to the bedroom. And I said, well, that's the mistake right there. See if you guys can see why. Why is it a mistake to go from making out to leading her to the bedroom by the hand? Can anyone tell me in the chat? Are you going to get ready? Yeah. Let's go in like half hour. Can anyone tell me? No, I'm talking to the audience here. <laughs> um, anybody? Yes. 
too big of a step. Okay, now let me explain why this. Is, oh, Jesus Christ! Someone said Gunwich went to jail. Wow, Coach Red Pill is going to jail too. He's facing 13 years in Ukraine for being a total fucking retard and spouting pro-Russian propaganda from within Ukraine. Okay, he's been arrested. He's in Ukrainian jail, probably facing 13 years. I mean, again, I wouldn't. I'm not like some big asshole where I wish harm on a lot of these people, but I have to say that that's good news to me. Okay, he was pushing a lot of nonsense, Coach Red Pill. Um, it's good news to me that Modern Life Dating's True Colors got blasted all over the internet by Penguins and Abba and Preach. I'm suing that bastard in two different countries. It's good news to me that the Tates are probably going to prison. I'm sorry if that offends people. I think they're a terrible influence. So, you know, the stars are aligning on some level. Um, why is it wrong to go from a makeout to bring her to the bedroom door? You skipped all the foreplay and you're prematurely putting her to the decision to have sex with you by making it a big move. She knows what happens in the bedroom. You let her from, you went limb from kissing to going into the bedroom. Boom. That same girl had you worked through foreplay and like slow, you know, like escalation steps in turn. And now you're playing with her clit and she's all turned on and preferably starts having sex with you right on the couch, which is how I do it. I have them start having sex with me on the couch and I do a few positions there before I take them to the bedroom. That is ideal. And that's going to have a lot better probabilities overall of the clothes going down. <laughs> wow. I just looked at a random comment. I have leads machine. I scored a foursome from it. That's awesome. Um, screenshot that. Testimonials pour in every day for this shit. It works extremely well. And again, as I always say, every piece of advice that I give in my paid products and on YouTube for that matter is backed with immense amounts of data and testing. And it was the best move I could find. And if anyone can ever show me a better move, even today, about any piece of the game, I will happily and gladly and thankfully change the system. And I will commend you for finding something that I missed. That's my attitude and my approach to game. Everyone else is just spouting off, oh, it seems to be like this. Okay. Tell me what it seems to be like in a chess match or in the poker match. Okay. What's better? Extreme amounts of scientific testing and iterative optimization and evolution over two decades, or just taking a wild guess. That's how I can critique all these guys. I, I went through all the trials and tribulations. I put in the really hardcore blood, sweat, and tears into this. Again, I'm not complaining. It was it allowed me to fuck tons of hot girls and have tons of amazing experiences worldwide. However, that's a much more thorough and proper way of doing it to lead to the optimal answers. So it's no surprise that guys get industry leading results from my shit. Um, okay, I'm just going to do rapid fire plowing through questions, but I want you to understand in that situation how something that seemingly simple of going from make out to leading to the bedroom door can really impact results. Um, and that, you know, as always, if you'd like to learn the whole system, platinumdatingsystem.com, book a free 30 minute call. We literally are down, this is not marking gimmick whatsoever. We are literally down to one spot left on Miami. They were taking nine. We were never going to overload any program. Three to one strict ratio adhered to. There's eight guys that have put down their payments and signed contracts. There literally is one left. And there's like a list of 12 guys that are, excuse me, trying to sort out funds and, um, make the dates work and that kind of stuff, but it's first come first serve. So, and the program is July 5th through 9th and Josh will be one of the coaches with me. He's over 700 lay count. Connor for my team over 600 lay count is the other coach. Okay. So let's do rapid fire through, um, the questions. Yes, that is right now. Um, I just fit it in, in my schedule. I don't really have a normal stream time though. But I try to, I usually do them during the day because girls are more available at night because girls work during the day. Um, babe, do you mind dropping a coffee over here? Okay, thanks. 
My logistics are poor. My place is an hour and 15 minutes from the date location. The girl doesn't have her own place. Uh, run more volume, find girls with their own place, or build up your finances and get your own place. Um, hour and 15 is a tough sell to bring girls back home from the date. Or just have, you know, have them come straight to your house. That's a solution too. Um, you can't meet at your area. I mean, like use common sense. There's no other options than getting a hotel or a fucking Airbnb, right? If you, or find girls that have their own place and only go on dates with girls that have their own place. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> eat well, take lots of supplements to build immunity. Again, that's kind of a very broad question. I have no idea about your current state of health or diet or anything. Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm very big on DHVs. I think they're very important in the game to separate you from the rest of the guys and make yourself stand out. And I really believe in mysteries, uh, you know, notion that there's hardwired attraction switches, protector of loved ones, leader of men, willingness to emote, to show a range of emotions, and also um, pre-selection, demonstrating that other hot girls like you. And you don't have to, it doesn't mean put a hot girl next to you in a Tinder picture, because that often comes across as corny and try hard. It means working into stories how you fucked hot girls, right? I. I, I talk about, um, oh, people, they ask sometimes if I have kids. No, I have a vasectomy because I got an ex pregnant in 2014 in California. This girl was a model, blah, blah, blah. Um, the kids would have been pretty, you know, the focus of the story isn't that I dated a model, but it's a side note. Okay. When they know that you're fucking hot girls, they know that other hot girls have approved of you. It's biological. I, I've said on many streams, they've done experiments where they put a monkey, a male monkey by himself, and the other chicks don't give a shit. And when they put a female next to him, all the other girls come over. The other female monkeys come over. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think DHV is, DHVs are very important. Um and, and they, they don't need to be lies. Like, let's make that clear. You don't need to lie. You don't need to make up shit. Not, I've had lots of clients try to go say they're a DJ when they're not. I actually was a DJ before I got really into pickup. I was DJing at a whole bunch of clubs and house parties like two, three times a week. Um, so you don't need to go make up shit to try to sound cool. Okay, but there, I'd be hard pressed to, to not find ways to make a guy look good I have clients, you know, I come from all walks of life and you can, it's just the way you frame it. You can spin what you have going on in a, in a positive way. That's fucking retarded. Okay. I know I used to talk to him on WhatsApp. He's an atheist. He's not Islamic. He's not Christian or Islamic. Okay. That this man of God stuff is to garnish sympathy and it's also to expand his cult following. Okay. He's trying to pass off red pill misogyny into the Islamic community and, and have them align. And it's just, it's all bullshit. Okay. Carrying the Quran around. It's all performance. Um, yeah. I mean, the game is more of like a, a storytelling book. Mystery method is more hardcore tactics. Um, rules of the game, I believe it was by Neil Strauss. Um, yeah. The style life Academy and all that shit. Um, I looked through some of that, but nothing beats Mystery Method and Revelations. Broke down Mysteries in Field. Yeah, he has a lot of low quality, you know, like shitty camera equipment and stuff like that, older stuff. Um, I'll, I'll look through some of it, though, for sure, and maybe maybe react to some of it. Um. <laughs> yeah the last like community guidelines strike i got was about a year and a half ago and it was for like openly bashing hamza's ear and he reported it and what happens is that they like put a strike on your channel and then you can't post for a week which like impacts my business and like the ability to make content like you can't even put out a video for a full week so 
Now, when I make fun of his dumb fucking ear, I do it subtly. Um, <laughs> what'd you say? <sighs> yeah, I wear a robe to, to hide that. Uh, a hood, a hooded robe. What a dumbass. Have Oxford's lead machine been updated since they came out, or is it still the same? Um, yeah, we've driven some updates in. I mean, the system largely, like, I, I had it, I had it, like Occam's like pretty fucking ironed out by the time I productized it, right? Like the Occam system, I came up with a lot of it in 2012, 2013, and then refined it over some more years. And I, I put it all into a product in 2017. Leads machine I built when I had a thousand lay count in 2019. And as I've adjusted scripts, we've, we've adjusted them in the course. Um, but a lot of it is still the same. And again, like, I'm not gonna, you know, if there's nothing to to upgrade, I'm not, I'm not just gonna try to change things for the sake of keeping it modernized. Like it's working extremely well. Um, this channel can't be on Shadow Band, but we have side channels doing very well. And we're going to be switching to those as the main channel at the right point in time. Sosnick sat there smoking cigars with tape, floating him softball questions. What would you do if you're president? Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's actually, as I said, it's quite sad and disappointing, and those guys should be ashamed of themselves. Um, you know, treating this guy as if he's not a piece of shit when he's an objective piece of shit for the sake of views is quite sad okay and platforming him and, and glorifying his horrible message and, and horrible effect on the world i think it is disgraceful that's my personal opinion on that and again like you know those guys want to grow their brand they're businessmen okay so they make ethical calls on things like this that are different than me. And I, again, I, I'm not Mr. Ethicist. I'm a fucking ethical nihilist. I define my own values, but I also hold to principles and, and, and don't compromise them. Like I've never fucked my friend's girls, even though I've had tons of opportunities to. Something I'll never do. Okay. Other people have tried to fuck my girls and I cut them off instantly. Um, uh, you know, again, says a lot about who people are with who they associate with and who they commend in spite of all the shit they're doing. Okay. When, um, when fresh and fit are bringing on multiple people that are admitting to rape and joking about it openly. And then, you know, value attainment wants to platform those people. That's not a good look. Okay. I don't give a shit. Like if they're popular, they could be the most popular fucking channel on the internet. It's fucking disgusting either way. And I think they should be ashamed of themselves. Um, I agree. I, I've been trying to set this up for years. Him and I used to speak a lot, like on a daily basis in 2016. Um, there was kind of a turning point where we had a bit of a falling out. <clears throat> uh, Mystery and, and his little uh, queer sidekick, Baxter, the little English dork, um, he had a, they had a, a program in Barcelona, a six person boot camp. Zero people got laid, zero lays on the program. Um, I ran a program, ironically, that same weekend in New York City with Jason James, who's still my New York City coach, formerly of Lux Life Dating. He's my New York City coach, and um, he's very good. And we had six students as well, and there were 11 pulls on our program. So almost two per student on average across three days. And I made like a public post saying, look, you guys are bragging about how some of your students got a phone number. We had 11 situations where girls got taken home. That's a huge difference, right? And and um, I don't remember what happened next, but Baxter made some comment and I re retaliated. Mystery, mystery like took Baxter's side and all that. It's fucking stupid shit. But Mystery also has like an ego like too big for a collab. He told me at one point when I wanted to get him on an interview, he's like, if you ask Siri to show me pickup artist, it shows me me, not you. And I was like, so fucking what? Like, I have 
endless amounts of proof for what I've accomplished in the game. I understand this shit inside out. I really respect that you understand this shit inside out. Putting our heads together with the wealth of our experience and knowledge on the game, we could really break into new territory and innovate some things and break new ground. And that's how I've always wanted the community to be in the first place. Except most of the people in it are just huge cocksuckers that are fake. Okay, He's one of the real authentic ones. And I'm even open to collaborating with him, not on a public forum, just us sitting down or even getting on a, on a, a call and working through a bunch of the areas. I could show him where I upgraded his system, things I cut out, things I optimized and, and make arguments both with data behind them and also rational arguments about why they warranted being changed and why what I'm doing is better. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm still working on that. I don't, I don't know if it'll ever happen. He's, he's too cool for that. Um, which is unfortunate and, and a bit sad. Um, but still holding out hope. I've been using, what's his name? Uh, Eric something, the coast to coast dating. He's like really close friends with mystery, ran out of programs with him. And, um, he wants to come to my channel and, and speak on mystery's behalf and all that as a, as a test run or something. Eric Lothbrock. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll do that and then open it back up to mystery again. Um, okay. Regarding, I got to move a little quicker here cause I have like 15 minutes. Um, why am I trying to cancel Tate? Clearly false allegations. Again, the guy's admitted to countless crimes himself, personal admissions. Okay. So there's no debate whether he's guilty or not to me. It shouldn't be to anyone. This is objective. Okay. Ask yourself if someone was caught over text, over audio, no, over police wiretap, and literally admitting to crimes on camera, on video. Okay. Would you think that person's guilty or, or innocent? To me, someone submitting to crimes across lots of different mediums, across lots of different crimes, is not innocent. Okay. So if you're going to say clearly false narratives, the matrix, conspiracy, you're retarded. Or maybe you just don't know the facts. I've reported on a lot of the facts through countless videos. And all those admissions to crimes, all those admissions to crimes, that looks bad, right? Like that should have consequences. And it's also only part of the story, okay? It's not like the prosecution is like, hey, here's our hand. Here's all our cards on the table. What do you guys think? The little bits of information we've been fed already looks horrible and damning. And I don't see how it could be otherwise. And I'm sure they have smoking guns waiting that no one knows about. Therefore, it doesn't take too big of a leap to think that when someone admits to lots of crimes, that there will be legal consequences. Okay, that's how anyone would normally think about that at all. So it doesn't matter what my opinion is. The very fact that people usually get in trouble for crimes that have admissions to them and lots of evidence against them. They, again, keep keep suspending disbelief and thinking that he's fully innocent. There's no evidence despite all the facts to the contrary. I don't really care. Yeah. I Again, 1,662 lay count, 18,500 phone numbers. No one's ever accused me of rape even one time. The one arrest I had in 2013 where a girl falsely accused me of kidnapping her from a Las Vegas casino never went to trial and there was no convictions on those things. And there was no sex in that case. And of course not, since there was no sex, there was no rape accusation or rape charge. People got that wrong. There was misreporting by a feminist journalist and people turned into a defamatory narrative and they acted like I was a convicted rapist. Not only was there no rape charge or rape accusation in that case, but the other charges, there was no convictions on any of them and it didn't even go to trial. Those are the facts. You can look it up. It's public record. Okay. So it says a lot that no one's ever accused me even once. He's been accused across multiple years by multiple girls. And in some cases, there were people that witnessed it. That looks terrible. And that's just one little piece of the dog shit pie. Okay. Um, and I also know a lot behind the scenes, right? That from various people that are friends with him. And there's a lot of fucked up shit that you guys have no idea about that would make you sick. Okay. And that's why I publicly cut off. And then everyone's just going to come in. Oh, you, you're a hater. You're jealous. 
let people think whatever the fuck they want. I don't care. I've stated why I've turned against him. I've openly been against him. I've spoken out against him and I've given all the reasons why. If people want to continue to think that's hate and jealousy, they're just dumb. That's fine. And they're also trying to fucking, you know, hide from the facts. People are like, okay, well, maybe he admitted to crimes and they're putting crimes in quotes. And so that's like, yeah, now, now objective laws being broken that have admissions to them are crimes in quotes. Okay. Maybe there'll be consequences legally. Not, not too far of a leap to assume that. Um, yeah, that's sad, right? So my, my best strategy videos hardly get any views. But everyone wants to hear the latest fucking gossip and drama. That's how people are. It's human nature. Um, okay, one sec. There's like a fucking million messages here. Um, yeah, a lot of guys turn negging into insulting, and it, and it just repels girls. Um, a lot of the best books, like if I said to like rattle them off, the blind watchmaker by Richard Dawkins is a good account of evolution. Uh, the blank slate modern denial of human nature by Steven Pinker shows that intelligence and personality are almost entirely determined by genetics, contrary to what people thought about it being mostly environment. Um, the singularity is near by Ray Kurzweil, Nietzsche's books, thus spoke Zarathustra beyond good and evil um you can get rid of the idea of a soul or a self by reading the synaptic self by joseph ledoux um life force by tony robbins goes through all the latest breakthroughs in precision medicine um lifespan live long enough to or no let's see lifespan why we age and why we don't have to by david sinclair <clears throat> Uh, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of ones that get recommended. Those are some of the uh, virus of the mind. Those are those are some of the, the really good ones. Um, but let me just keep fucking plying through this shit. Um, let's see. See, look, misinformation. No, I was not accused of, of rape or rape ever. Okay, that situation was a kidnapping charge, where a girl claimed that she went against her will through a crowded casino of like 80 people, even including past the security desk of multiple officers that were within arm's reach while holding my hand, smiling and laughing. Literally all her actions were to the contrary of being kidnapped, but she claimed after the fact that she was kidnapped. Okay, I had all the evidence on my side. The judge laughed at it, said this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, and it did not go to trial, and there were no convictions. And then people thought it was a rape situation. There was no sex in that case, and there were no convictions on any of the other charges. Okay, those are the facts. So no, I did not have, this is not like the Tate situation at all. Um, yeah, it's going to be really good. Uh, doctors really don't know shit about general health. They're taught in medical school to prescribe medications and to diagnose common ailments. They get like one course on nutrition and supplementation. So they're almost as uneducated about it as a lay person. Just because they have an MD doesn't mean jack shit. Uh, yeah, mystery failed to evolve. There's that comment about Lee's machine again. That's awesome. Uh, that independent film got put on hold due to a, a banking and financial crisis in Sri Lanka, which was responsible for the funding. Uh, I'm actually going to ping that guy right now. Uh, um, um. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. That was supposed to go down at the beginning of this year, and then there was that delay from the Sri Lankan bank situation. Um, let's see. Yeah, and again, like mystery did get a lot of things right. 
and and inspired me a great deal and I, and I leveraged a lot of really important pieces of a system that are still in place in my own system today and I gave him all credit where credit's due and again and nothing but respect Yeah, I mean, he's almost never talked about because the community has like almost nothing even resembling real game anywhere across all the channels and coaches, and it's really gotten way worse, right? Like it, it was like bad enough when like RSD was running the show for 10 years and it was all fucking mental masturbation and dog shit. But now it's just a bunch of like misogyny and like disrespect and openly bitching against women. There, there's not even an, an inkling of strategy in most of these things. Or you have like pseudo technical bozos like Todd, you know, massively overcomplicated, misleading under the guise of like this is technical instruction. Um, yeah, the one with the car. And again, like you just play up your strengths, things you have going on yourself with yourself. You just fucking build them in, and like you just don't do it in a way that's bragging. It's, it literally goes like this: Hey, what do you do for work? uh blah 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 oh cool uh, i run a company and i dj events are you into electronic music oh you you're a dj oh i fucking love electronic music blah blah blah, blah. oh that's awesome you own a company like tell me more about that successful access to a lot of people well traveled right? and again you don't have to have like a big resume of doing all this shit but whatever you do have spin it in your favor and also be great like i remember back in the forums in 2012 a guy was like yeah, present yourself as great, but actually better yourself in every way and like be great. Um, but like, it's an uplifting, positive message too. I'm encouraging everyone to be the best version of themselves. Like, literally, a lot of you have the potential to be really fucking awesome and bang lots of hot chicks. It's just yourself in the way, and that's why I love this job. Is I'm getting people out of their own way because you're your worst enemy in this game. All these dumb negative narratives you tell yourself comes out in the way you present yourself to girls right you can't tell yourself you suck all the time and that you have all these issues and blah 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 blah, blah and you're not good enough and then be like hey uh nice to meet you i think i suck do you want to fuck me right and it's not in the, in the in so many words like that but that's basically what's happening and they're like uh no I think you suck because you think you suck, right? Again, like when I roll up to a girl, she doesn't know my lay count. She doesn't know my wild amounts of success with hot women from the past. I'm a stranger. It's about how I carry myself and the game is unforgiving. If I'm in a terrible mood I and mean, I'm exhausted and all this shit, or I, I'm really stressed or whatever, I might open weak or I might, you know, come across dejected and, and unsure of myself or this or that they're not going to be into that by the same token a virgin who's been with no girls and has no experience if he starts carrying himself like the man girls are going to respond to that that's what's so great about this game it's it's not about you know what you've actually done it's about how you're carrying yourself with john's confidence image look and voice it ropes women in if you look at a lot of the coaches they don't have these boxes checked so they overcompensate as entertainers well i mean like someone was asking about that like independent film where i was supposed to be like the lead actor and be the the, the seducer in the movie the guy said he can just get the sense and i hear this all the fucking time from clients that sign up they're like you seem different than the other dating coaches on youtube it seems like you've actually done all this stuff I'm like, yeah, I also have hundreds of hours of infield to show me pulling girls home over and over and over. I also have several hundred pictures of me in hookup situations with hot girls. I also have all the most respected guys in the community vouching for me. I also like can explain to you why my stuff works better than you know, like it goes on and on and on and on. But there's a difference between someone that's really done all this shit versus someone that's pretending. It's a huge difference. Loving the value. 
Fuck wheat waffles. He's a little teenage pizza delivery man. The end. Spouting off nonsense because he's an insecure kid that got bullied as a ginger. That's that's the whole story there. You know, let him let him drive people to depression, and suicide, and, and shootings and stuff like that. Um, what wh- what are you gonna do besides fucking show everybody who they're listening to and being influenced by? Um, <laughs> love you man i was just in london me and liz pulled from uh ministry of sound and steel factory hot blondes from both um maybe but he, he's like looking for precision right he like it's not overcomplicated in the way that Todd's is overcomplicated. It's, you know, a lot of it's like pretty spot on, but it's not conducive to learn game the way he was teaching it in that level of detail. It's more, it's better to teach it like an 80, 20. Like when I developed my systems and developed my trainings, I had an acute um, consideration in my head that this needs to be digestible quickly and it needs to be able to be implemented quickly and be able to be assimilated quickly, okay? So it's not about know every little detail of the game. It's how can I get guys getting laid like crazy in a matter of a couple days, in a matter of a week with the virtual stuff, right? So it's not that you need to know every fucking detail. You just need to know what to do in the major situations, and you need to know the major adjustments to make. And we need to clear your... Uh, major sticking points and and bottlenecks on a customized level so that we can open up the funnel and that girls aren't getting stuck at some level or another. And most guys have compounding bottlenecks where the funnel is choking off, right? So if your lead flow sucks, it chokes off and you have no girls to text or minimal girls to text. If your texting sucks, then you're not reliably getting a bunch of dates set. If your dates suck, then you're not reliably bringing girls back home if your escalation processes at home suck, you're not usually converting the girls you bring back home into sex. And if your retention game sucks, you end up with a string of one-night stands and you can't build a rotation or, or get repeats. <clears throat> and then there's a whole bunch of other bottlenecks that can happen at the various levels on a more micro level. And it's my job to clear all those quickly, very quickly. And, and a lot of the system like clears them for you when you're executing it properly, but then we adjust based on the mistakes you're making. And I, I've helped so many guys at this point, and I understand exactly how to drive in optimal fixes no matter what your situation. So I firmly believe that, you know, I, I am the leading world authority on this stuff, right? It's, again, it's not meant to sound arrogant or like, oh, look at me. I think that that is fully backed up by the results. They speak for themselves. My own results and the results of the clients, okay? That's all that matters. Everything else is just fucking talk from anyone. Okay, so what does that mean? All the guys that say they're so good at this that don't even have one picture with a girl and don't have one testimonial with a client. It's just, it's just fucking words. It's just words, bro. Facts. I fucked 3,000 girls, bro. Yep, sure. And I fucking rode off on a unicorn over the mountain last night. All right, should we show everyone Walter's fat wife again? All right, um, how should you systematically hit mysteries, five attraction switches through DHV stories? Uh, oh, you're asking if you should do that. Um, yes. Yes. The more you can flip those attraction switches, the more you're going to generate attraction in the girl. 
but it's also like how you carry yourself, right? Like mystery said, when you control the frame, like good frame control and, and controlling of the frame beats all other rules in the game. It like holds Trump. It holds fucking rank. Okay. Um, So, like, what, what I mean by that is when you're acting like the man and, like, there's no way you're going to fuck this up and, like, you're going to get this girl for sure, but not in an arrogant way, okay, just in a confident, sure of yourself way, that goes a long way. Okay, When she can't throw you off your game because your frame is so strong that you're going to get this girl, that's when you start really, really, really crushing Okay, and it's not about like, oh, did I hit this switch? Or did, I, did I tell this story? I'm not trying to do that in my head. I have, I have some stories that I tell on most interactions and most dates, but it's not about, you shouldn't think of it as like, oh, I need to make sure I hit all these switches and blah, blah, blah. You just need to move things forward, deal with non-compliance objections as they come up, and calibrate to her reactions. Okay, and you do that with proper optimized strategy and um, experience. Let's jump here. We got a fucking $10 thing here. Oh, this is a good question. Okay, I'm gonna read this out loud. Is it okay to take breaks from lead acquisition and just enjoy one or two girls for a while? Lead acquisition can be time and energy consuming when focused on other girls. Thank you for your work. Very valid uh, point in question. And, and I've mentioned this before, as a as a point of teaching so what happens typically my week program as i've said many times for those interested you can go here and see the details platinumdatingsystem.com it is the industry leading program to master this permanently very quickly but uh, what happens is usually by week two or three guys have more dates than they can fit into their schedule and that is quite literally true most of the time meaning like, like I, I've just been giving this example recently because it's one of the newest guys in the program. A guy came on wanting to improve his online game. He wanted to improve all of it, but online was a big focus for him. And he was getting two to three matches a week on Tinder prior to joining my program. After we did the profile revamp, which involves getting a pro photo shoot, the girls picking the top five best pictures, me writing the bio, giving him the text scripts to convert his matches into phone numbers and convert his phone numbers into dates. He ended up getting 25 matches in just a single weekend across a few days after starting with two to three matches a week before my training, 25. And then he set 10 dates out of it for week two. How did he do that? Using my exact scripts that I'm using personally. How do you get 25 matches? Going through our tried and true process to maximize the output of your profile, okay? Week two, hey, I can't fit all these girls into my schedule. So I'm teaching him how to double and triple stack time slots in week two. And this happens all the time. It's like they go from like sucking shit or, or not doing that well or maybe not having enough quality um, or not enough consistency or whatever. Even, there's lots of guys that join that are getting laid regularly too before and we get them laid much more often with much hotter girls. But um, so they go on all these dates and they hook up with a bunch of new girls. They go on more dates, hook up with more girls. And then what usually happens sooner than later is they run into a one that they're very attracted to that they have awesome sex with that they connect with really well and now they're choosing from a place of options okay before it was i have no options or i have some shitty options that i don't really want to get serious with right nobody wants to fucking uh you know parade around a six girlfriend unless you're a dating coach on youtube okay and, and, and that that would be you know that would be on the high end of attractiveness for a dating coach to have a six most of them have like threes and fours again people like are white knighting the shit out of whenever i say this hey that's so rude of you i don't fucking care if that's rude i don't think it's rude at all and it's very fair game to call someone out that's a self-proclaimed dating guru and having a girl that's below average no excuse for that ever i don't care if she's the coolest girl in the world there's other really cool girls that are hot so don't try to justify it for them and, and don't say all oh, these girls are people too and they have feeling I'm not saying they're not girl, they're not people and all this shit. 
Okay. What I'm saying is it's a fucking embarrassment for a guy to be claimed to be an expert and having a girl that's ugly. That's not that crazy of a statement. It's the same exact logic why you wouldn't want to get trained by a fat personal trainer. And it's the same exact logic why you wouldn't want to take financial advice from a broke homeless guy. Okay. Oh, well, that broke homeless guy, uh, you know, he's a person. But great. That he, I have nothing against him, but he shouldn't be teaching you how to make money. Okay. Am I crazy? You want you want to fucking listen to this guy all day on YouTube that's going to go home and rail a girl that you would never fucking bang even if you were like blacked out drunk? Okay. So my point is like you're not going to go want to parade around like a fucking five or a four or whatever like, hey, friends, look at this girl here. Oh, cool. Uh, you know, nice job, man. Right? Like, no, you're not proud of that. You're not happy with that. Okay, so when you do find one that is attractive and that you do connect with and you have good sex with, I oftentimes have clients come on the, on the call, hey, I, I really like hanging out with this girl and I like seeing her more than these other girls and do I have to still like keep getting all these dates and like meeting all these girls? No, enjoy it. The whole fucking point of this is to give you access to top tier girls and create whatever dream dating situation you want. If you want four or five like that, do it. If you want one like that, do it. If you want to marry that one, do it. But now you can do it where you have the options. I'm not going to tell you what your goal should be or your end goal or, or what you should do with these skills. I'm giving you the tools to reliably generate lots of high quality dates and keep those girls so that you have really good skills to take any girl that you see in public or from the online apps and move it down to a romantic or sexual relationship and you have that skill for life, okay? Go fuck lots of girls, go not fuck lots of girls. That's up to you, okay? But don't think you need to keep like grinding it out because it is time intensive. And by when he says lead acquisition, he means like swiping Tinder, cold approaching girls at clubs, cold approaching girls on the street. You don't have to keep doing that. That's just to keep the lead flow constant in order to keep the date flow constant so that you have regular new hookups and or regular new options to get more serious with. However, if you found one that you like a lot and that you enjoy spending time with more than the rest, you have the option and are well within your rights to go and enjoy that. I tell guys like you don't have to fucking be logging time on Tinder and at the clubs if you don't want to. It's not like a requirement. So it's totally cool. And in practice, right, when I get guys very good, when they come on the program, they go and get a bunch of dates. They find one they like. They usually get more serious with her. If it doesn't work out, then they go back and they get a bunch more high-quality dates. They have a bunch more awesome high-quality options. Maybe this time they want to run a bunch of them at once and they run a rotation instead of getting more serious. Um, <laughs> I guess this fucking title really threw people off. Yeah, when we write remembering mystery, this is again my team wrote that. Uh, he is alive and well. He's not he's not dead. Okay. So yes, um, you can take breaks and enjoy the the girls you have. And and even I do that. Like I run big rotations. Like some days I see like two rotation girls and I hang out with Liz. No new lays. Okay. A lot of days I'm banging hot rotation girls. I'm having great sex with girls that are regulars. That doesn't impact the lay count at all. I'm not prioritizing new lays. Oh, but your lay count's so high. That's because the skills are high. Like you're going to get a great output when your skills are high. Okay. Um, let's keep going here. Um. Cool. Got a bunch of people on. If you guys hit the like button, I'm going to try to keep blasting through the, the comments here. Um, and then it's Brazilian Valentine's Day. So me and Liz are going out to eat after this, but I'm going to keep blasting through here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Again, it's about the 80 20. It's about. Like, like the litmus test is like, does this coach's trainings give this guy a lot more actual tangible results? 
Not this bullshit of, oh, his game's improving, but he's not getting late. Fuck those kinds of comments. That is a vacuous statement. That is nonsensical. Okay, Your game is not improving in any kind of meaningful way if you're not getting laid over the course of several months or years. Okay, it's not like, oh, I'm building up critical mass and like, you know, two years later I, I get laid because my game improved. No, you should be able to get laid today with strategies that a qualified coach is teaching you. Okay, you don't need to fucking wait months and years and pay them for endless periods and buy 70 of their products like RSD and all this shit. That's called being taken advantage of by a little fucking redhead dork. Um, okay. Who, who jokes about being gay like 30 times on camera. Okay. <laughs> I mean, did I screenshot this one? Jesus Christ. Okay, let me screenshot this one. All right. Next question. Um, yeah, Todd is a fucking dumbass. Uh, Revelations, it's by Mystery and Love Drop. But I think the primary author is Love Drop, who, real name Chris Odom. Yep. It's really, it's really good. There's like all these like beautiful charts and shit in it. It's, it's really good. Um, okay. Here's an, yeah, this is a good question. A lot of people don't understand frames. I really like this example. Let's say you said to a girl, hey, I want you to come over to my house tomorrow in your underwear. And let's say she slaps you across the face. Okay, now let's say you go up to a different girl, equally as hot, and you say, hey, do you want to come swimming in my pool tomorrow? Sure. What's the end result? She's coming over in a bikini which is the same appearance as underwear, but you framed it differently. Do you understand? Let me give you another example. Um, are you good at beer pong? Yes. Cool. We can be partners later and you can help carry the team. Versus, hey, do you want to come over later and play beer pong? In one case, you set the frame as if you already agreed to go hang out later. And that's exactly how you should structure your verbals when you're referring to pulling. And this applies everywhere in life. Okay. Frame control is essential and critical and very relevant everywhere. I coach guys on how to get job raises, like salary raises. This one guy was making 70 grand. We negotiated for him to get up to 130 grand. I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs of that, but a lot of it is frame control. And they're like, say you're trying to get an apartment. Or let's, let's say you're trying to land a job. Like you're looking, you're interviewing for a position, not talking about a raise. It's very powerful to speak as if they've already hired you. So tell me what I'd be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, and if I wanted to like use this as a resource, how would I do that? Oh, well, we'd have you blah, blah, blah. And now they're thinking about as if you are hired and you're an employee. So framing is the way that you put things into context. Okay. So that it gets people to think about things in a, in a, in a way that can be more or less persuasive depending on the frame. So that's why frame control is so powerful. When I say like maintain the frame that you're the man, that you're going to get this girl for sure, etc., everything flows through that. So when she makes a statement, it's not, oh, fuck. Does this girl like me? Did I lose points? How am I doing so far? None of that enters into the, into, into the mental dialogue. Why? Because you got it for sure. Why? Because you're the man. Why? Because you do this all the time. 
but I don't do this all the time. You very quickly will start doing it all the time when you're doing exactly what I tell you to do. And then you are doing it all the time and that reinforces it. So frames are powerful because like, here's one more example, just to, to really fucking hammer the point home. When you're doing like what 99% of these guys on YouTube are doing, dating coaches, anything that falls in the category of fancy, gimmicky, gamey, etc. When you do that, it comes from the frame of here's the girl's value. Here's you. You're trying to use this trick or tricks or set of tricks that are very obviously tricks to the girl. Why? Because they're not authentic. They're not congruent with who you are. And they very, they very obviously look like lines or gimmicks to win her over. Who needs to do that? Is it the guy that's on her level? Does he need to use gimmicks and tricks and fancy little techniques to win her over? No. He's on her level and he's positive and sure that he can get her. Who needs to use tricks and fancy nonsense? Low value guys. Why? They're hoping the tricks or putting on this facade or, or little performance of being the funny guy, the witty guy, the clever guy, the, the intelligent guy, that that will be the guy that she likes. So it's basically saying, I'm not good enough. Let me put on this performance or try to be someone that I think you'll like so that you'll like me because I'm a fucking loser. And the girl says, no, you look like a fucking loser. I'm not stupid. And those are dumb tricks. Go away. Okay. So that's why guys that are regularly crushing hot ass, don't go ask a girl on her cell phone if she's a secret space agent from the moon. Hopefully that all made sense. And that was a James Tusk reference, a literal verbal he said, which makes my job more fun. Let them keep talking that way. <laughs> but James Tusk is a good looking man and he wears suits. Yeah, that's, that's fine. But then he also opens his mouth and then he's fucked. Maybe you should practice RST Tyler's uh, no words game or Todd's uh, verbal, nonverbal, verbal game. <laughs> Spit out my coffee here. Again, pure nonsense. Like, like I never thought that I'd have to like come in and combat like an endless siege of nonsense in this community. I was really, really, really hoping it was going to be guys like me and Mystery, and we were all going to fucking open source collaborate and all advance the game together in a collaborative way. Boy, was I fucking wrong. But luckily, I allied with guys like Josh and Connor and Jesse and, and these other top other guys around the world, and we advanced the game behind the scenes in, in very collaborative ways. Okay. But what you see online is just a pure fucking circus. It's nothing more. It's a bunch of like really big losers that don't get chicks pretending on the internet like they are the man and they fucking crush. And they all fucking band together. And it's, it's really quite sad because they're pushing strategy that's way off in left field mindsets, viewpoints, all way off in left field while masquerading as experts with conviction on, on their advice. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Ask me to dox Todd. Uh, I can dox Todd because he was in a lawsuit with Real Social Dynamics and his, his real, real name was there. So he, his real name is Todd Vandehey. And I'm partially responsible for this Valentine shit. I, trust me, I did not suggest the name Valentine. However, when I was assisting him in 2012, he's like, a lot of girls are looking up Todd Life Coach and they're finding my content. And I was like, make a fucking alias. Right. So he, he made Todd Valentine and then RSD was like saying they had copyright over that. So he changed it to Todd V. Okay. But it, it's still, 
is somewhat resembling his real name of Van de Hey, which is like Dutch or some shit. It's like Austin Summers. His real name is like Austin Sangfreud. A lot of them just pick like gay last names that resemble, you know, Valentine's Day. Nice choice. <laughs> I picked Anthony because of the fucking Matthew McConaughey uh, character from the, the, the movie Two for the Money, where he's like, I understand this game inside out. I don't need any fucking marketing tricks. And the rest of the people in his industry are all like using marketing hype. So that's why I chose that name. I thought it was very fitting. <laughs> Bunny. <laughs> he went by Zanius. He was the he used to dye his hair blonde, like the Backstreet Boys. And he was living in a tent in the back of Project Hollywood with the pickup name Zanius. And I made I made these memes in the past. You can't spell Zanius without anus. <laughs> uh, too fun. All right. Get the fuck out of there. I mean, I've never fucking caught mouth herpes. I don't intend on catching it. I've made out with tons of girls at clubs. Uh, my friends joke that I might have like super immunity from like railing so many different girls being exposed to so many different germs um but yeah i mean that should be obvious you know if a girl's got a cold sore that you shouldn't be making out with her or letting her suck your dick yes yes indeed we're, we're supposed to go to dinner after this What do you do if you make out in public and home is still three kilometers away? Call a cab or an Uber. You don't have to try to public close. <laughs> park. Hey, go go rail her out in the park on a on a picnic blanket. Yeah, I, I used to be a computer programmer, okay? And I tell guys you have to weigh the thing through the mental model of how society sees that thing in terms of its social value. Okay, so what is the mental model of a computer programmer? Dork, low value, nerd, okay? doesn't matter, like, you know, if you happen to be intelligent and analytical and all this stuff that comes along with being good at programming. You have to look at how society sees it. It's not a glamorous, cool thing. So instead, you modify it to say something like you lead a tech team, okay? Something that's going to be palatable. And it has to be in lingo that they can understand, some guys are like trying to describe their job or, or, or stuff that they've done in like very technical terms and it just goes right over the girl's head. That is a waste as well. They have to understand it and it has to be something that makes sense and that looks high value in the eyes of society. Yeah, that had a particular effect. Excuse me, when the pandemic first came out, I had a host of supplements people could use to uh, prevent getting coronavirus. B pollen was one of them. Um, but there's a life extension immune, uh, immunity boosting formula that I take every day. Um, NAC, otherwise known as N acetylcysteine, is something that is a massive free radical scavenger that is especially useful for combating the harmful effects of alcohol. So if you drink alcohol, it would be uh, advantageous of you to be supplementing with N acetylcysteine. They come in 600 milligram capsules. You should be ideally co administering one 600 milligram capsule per drink at the same time you're taking the drink, up to six drinks, or take six before bed. Now, a hangover is a combination between a massive free radical attack on your body plus dehydration. So, Acet aldehyde is the harm harmful byproduct of ethanol. NAC binds to acet aldehyde and neutralizes it. It's also a precursor to glutathione, which is the primary phase two detoxifier in the liver. So when you take NAC, it literally is like a direct antidote to the harmful byproducts of alcohol. That's how I made it through so many years of hard drinking. You put six NAC pills on your pillow with a coconut water, which is more hydrating than regular water. And when you get home, you pound the fucking 
NAC pills with the coconut water. And you should also be adding in like vitamin C, B vitamins, vitamin E, like a bunch of things. There's a, a more complete stack to combat the effects of alcohol, but NAC is one of the primary things because it's going to neutralize the harmful byproducts of ethanol and also keep your liver functioning optimally with the precursor to glutathione. And then as a side benefit, uh, NAC also helps regulate blood sugar. And it protects you from things like secondhand cigarette smoke and, and so on and so forth. So that's the explanation there. I have a video called Healthy Drinking Secrets <laughs> where it basically shows you how to minimize damage to your body from alcohol if you are a drinker. I'm coming up on four years of no drinking as of September, which is fucking crazy. I drank every day for like 15 years. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, the Corona pickup product I made was like a how to do online game on steroids kind of thing. And I made that for when the clubs were closed during the pandemic. Um, I got my PayPal accounts banned because they thought it was like, you know, teaching guys how to violate the fact that, you know, or encouraging the disease to spread or whatever, um, you know, coronavirus to spread. So it was against like PayPal's terms of service. So we like stopped selling it at that point. But I think we're going to rebrand it and just because the stuff in there is still very valuable, even outside the pandemic, about how to take online game to the extreme. So I think we might re-release that at some point. We've been talking about that. Yeah, Tate is annoying as fuck. And he's also a horrible person. Um. Sean Michael, I believe, is the guy that goes by Discovery, who's part of the Three Second Rule crew. They literally call themselves that as a company now, the Three Second Rule. <laughs> um, don't know too much about him, to be fair. Um, not a fan of night game. Too loud, too many drunk people. I'm decent with day game. The downtime is bad. How to start liking night game? I mean... You know, just go and have fun with friends, right? Like you can go and enjoy the music, enjoy the fact there's lots of hot girls everywhere. But being able to go from interaction to interaction is is priceless. No, I haven't. And I'm still on good terms with Adam Sosnick. And, it, you know, he hasn't really taken sides of a lot of these shitheads. But at the same time, they shouldn't be like glorifying a guy that's facing a whole bunch of serious criminal accusations that he's admitted to on camera um, and stroking his dick metaphorically for views um but you know that's of primary importance is the views to them so wouldn't expect otherwise unfortunately you know that being said i i actually messaged sosnick and and was like did you see all the fucking screenshots that came out on mld and he's like yeah it looks fucking terrible all right so he you know he's not a bad guy he's actually a pretty cool dude i hung out with him after the show um but, you know, we just have different philosophies on associating with pieces of shit, I guess. Yeah, that's a mystery quote. Um, my uncle, who, who's like the best natural I've ever met, and other top elite level guys in the game that I met through various circles were very, you know, guys like Josh um, and a bunch of others. We all pushed each other. Yeah, but I don't, with the amount of crimes they've admitted to and all the like smoking gun stuff that's like not even been revealed public. Um, my best estimate is that even like the best plea deal they get will involve serving time. It'll just be a reduced sentence. But yeah, if I had to predict the outcome, I would predict it's going to be a plea um, with some amount of time served and, and an option for probation. Uh, Paul Jenkins, the man, we still talk regularly. He he plowed out like two fifty. Lays. He's married now with kid, a kid. I think he's going to have a second kid. Um, he's living in London, but he was a New York City day game guy that we line up on a lot of things independently. But he's a very intelligent guy as well. A lot of the best guys that were very smart and analytical. Um, he was a Harvard physics major. And decision node theory is basically like 
making the game algorithmic. If this happens to this, this happens to this, this happens to this. To be fair, I haven't gone through it extensively, so I can't speak to it. However, in theory, um, I expect it's solid given the fact that I've talked at length with him about game. We line up on a lot of stuff that we came to independent conclusions on. Um, again, he, his ego is too big, right? And he's also like trying to stay out of the fame, stay out of the limelight. And some of the reporters were, were really fucking hard on him over some of the past years, you know, like he, like he, like he, like he's a fucking emotional mess on some levels. Right. And I have been at various points in my life. I think it comes with the territory, right? Like he went through some shit as a child, just like me, just like me and a lot of the other best guys. And, um, oh, she's sporting the new, the new coat. We bought this coat in Paris. He's like, you have the fur and you have the no fur. And I'm like, yeah, get the fucking fur. That looks way better. It's like detachable fur. Nice. Um, all right, I'll wrap up here. We'll get out of here in a sec. Um, uh, are you all ready? Can you give me those those new boots we bought? Can you give me those new the nice shoes we bought? Um, say again? Yeah. I just popped this up on the, on my YouTube story tonight, but we, we got a nice picture of Liz for Brazilian Valentine's Day here. <laughs> um, longest relationship, three and a half years. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Mystery's ego is a little bit too big, um, which is sad, right? Like, he, like he's like a big database of pickup knowledge, and his skills are very high, and he understands things on a level that hardly any guy does regarding the game, uh, just like me, right? So uh, that is my dream collab. Not, not just – it's not like, oh, like, because of, like – fanboyism or stardom or anything like that it's i really believe that him and i could break some serious ground and, and innovate there's like certain areas of the game that i really need to work through still but the system don't get me wrong the system functions like gangbusters but there's like certain things that i'd like to like really work through on a deep level where i think he could provide some insight yeah Tate uh, ran a pyramid scheme and a cult, and there's so many negatives. Like apart from all the admissions to crimes, which is objectively horrible. Um, and again, I, I don't see how people look past that. And for those of you that aren't aware, he's admitted to a whole bunch of crimes on video, over text message, on audio note, and through wiretapped police. You know, when he was in the in the fucking detention center, making calls, trying to bribe politicians. Like, there's so much direct admissions to crimes; it is insane. Okay, but he also did a lot of fucked up shit beyond that. Uh, I've never seen the whatever podcast. People are telling me I need to go on there. I see they're hosting a bunch of shitheads. Um, I don't know who Gorlock the Destroyer is, um, but if you email me, email me a video that's worth reacting to, I would consider it. Um, probably the five most important supplements are vitamin D, ubiquinol, which is the bioavailable version of CoQ10, which is responsible for keeping your heart healthy, um, high dosages of vitamin C, bioavailable curcumin. There's a, a life extension foundation supplement called curcumin elite. It's like 47 and a half times more bioavailable than regular curcumin more expensive, but that's well worth it for blocking cancer and inflammation in general, which is responsible for like all the major diseases. And then probably omega-3 fish oil at high dose. Um, you could try to do what I did. I have a girlfriend, you know, technically a wife that allows me to act as if I'm single. So that's the best of both worlds.
Um, yeah, I mean, we don't have plans to like run this back again, but like we did have a lot of people that were interested that couldn't make the dates work or that didn't have finances quite in line yet. So I anticipate nothing set yet, but we'll probably be doing this again potentially next year. And we might do it on the West Coast of the U.S. Um, no, I didn't, but let me know. I, I always love learning more about everything. And I take taurine, so I'd like to know um, what that was about. Email me at john at johnanthonylifestyle.com. Um, I'm open to any PUA contest. The, the fucking idiot comedian, punk bitch, Danny Mullen, uh, challenged me to a pickup contest. He said him and his crew of like four dork friends, including like literally like 19 year olds and stuff, uh, said they would beat me in a pickup competition easily. And I responded and I said, not only do I accept against all five of you, but I'll wager you anywhere individually, each person between 10 and 100K each. So at a low level, we could bet 50K between the five of you. At a high level, we can bet half a million bucks and I'm good for it. And please accept. And then they all went radio silent. What a surprise. Good. So that would have been some of the easiest money I ever made unless they cheated, which I would have anticipated they would try to do. But, you know, again, five nobodies going to come challenge the, the guy with the best proven results in the game. Pretty dumb. Um, but again, people like to run their mouths on the internet, right? Fresh and fit. <clears throat> We're adamantly challenging Alban Preach to a boxing match until Preach accepted. And then they said they don't want conflict with anyone and they don't want drama with anyone. And, you know, basically back down like pussies. And now they're back a year later re-challenging just ABBA, trying to call ABBA because Preach has a martial arts background and used to be a bouncer. So now they're trying to uh, – and Abba said, <laughs> Abba said he would consider uh, fighting them. I can't remember his condition. Some fucking funny condition. I can't remember it. Again, the internet's so fucking stupid. Like, I don't know. And plus there's variance. Like if you put two pickup artists in a club and some guy opens like a, a really DTF girl, and pulls that doesn't ma mean he's better it's like you could put someone like down at a poker table that sucks absolute shit and they get dealt ace ace and the flop is like you know ace something whatever and, and they crush that hand it doesn't really prove anything it's like yes some people get dealt good cards sometimes so uh, these, these ideas of like going every, you know for out for one night and see who can pull first or pull the hotter girl it's not really uh that indicative of someone's skill level whereas showing over 100 pulls on camera or showing like several hundred i've already proven myself many times over showing several hundred pictures of hot girls in hookup situations like that is showing what you can do over the long term right not uh who who met the more dtf girl on this one given night out randomly um Is the three-day waiting period to respond after getting the number still valid? No, that's retarded. C guys like Corey Wayne push that. It's nonsensical and, and retarded. Um, again, like the lead is going cold. You want to strike while the iron's hot, right? Like in sales, if you take a contact and then you wait to try to close it or set a sales appointment, the odds of closing or the odds of that, that lead closing go down 50% a day. Okay. So you want to strike while the iron's hot. You want to get her out on a day ASAP. Um, all this like waiting stuff to seem non needy and making her chase you is absolutely backwards and retarded. I'm a guy who gets laid now because of you. I had to unlearn all the BS from the other PBA guys. It really helped me learn a lot, man. My conversion rate from dates to sex is almost 100% thanks to you. It's awesome. Um, one here.
possible reverse aging. Yeah, there's something called biological age, which is different than your chronological age, based on a whole bunch of biomarkers. And there's a lot of people teaching stuff to reverse it. There's a prominent figure in the news right now named Brian Johnson, who's a tech Silicon Valley mogul spending a shitload each year to reverse his biological age and chronicling it all online. Look at his blueprint on his website for a lot of good recommendations for baseline. Um, yeah, my best teacher ever, who was a philosophy teacher, and we're still in regular contact, he said, don't try to set everything up in advance, gravitate towards what you love and let the details work themselves out. Because I was studying computer science, but I really liked philosophy, but I was afraid to switch to philosophy because philosophy is not conducive to capitalism. But then I got really into cognitive science. Cognitive science is not conducive to capitalism either, unless you want to become a researcher in a niche area of cognitive science. I didn't really give a fuck about researching in one little niche area. I wanted to learn about the, the findings of cognitive science and how they can apply to philosophical problems. So I ended up doing a master's in philosophy of cognitive science. Um, but you know, I almost switched career directions a whole bunch of times and then I'm a fucking dating coach. Right? I have double bachelors in computer science and philosophy with a minor in cognitive science and I have a master's degree in human computer <clears throat> interaction, which is like applying cognitive psychology to software and systems. And then I have a master's in philosophy of cognitive science which is studying the findings of cognitive science and what their philosophical implications are. But then I almost became a lawyer. And then I worked as a systems engineer on nuclear missile defense. And then I led tech teams, at IBM and Sony and HP. And then I started teaching guys how to fuck a lot. Here I am. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I still know all the fucking church songs imprinted in my brain forever all right <laughs> uh <laughs> some of you might know that tune if I it's kind of funny the church uh copied a whole bunch of cult tactics uh like playing sounds at certain wavelengths it's actually really quite scary and the way the whole structure of a mass is like exactly what cults do <clears throat> um anyways Uh, speak to, you know, we, we partner with a company called Snapper that can place high quality portrait photographers that are that are very vetted in terms of their qualifications in any English speaking country on the world. And they typically know the lay of the land. Um, you'd be hard pressed to not be able to find any good background anywhere. You can make a good background out of most things if you just probably aren't looking in the right places. So you got to speak to an expert locally. Um you know, we can doing it through us. We can set you up with the photographer and all that stuff. But if you're going to try it on your own, check Craigslist or Airbnb photo gigs. Yeah, the guys on my team, some of them are good, but better than mystery. I don't know what Mystery's current lay count is. He was at, he told me personally, he was in the low 300s in 2016. I hit 300 in 2014, May 2014, but he's also in his 50s now. Uh, a lot is wrong with Todd. Go watch my videos on it. Who wins in a Muay, a Muay Thai fight? I would definitely give him the worst cauliflower ear he's ever had. <laughs> And you know which year it would be in too. Uh, I'd like purposely throw right hooks the whole time in that fucking Dumbo ear. Uh, let's see. Oh no, I would definitely fight him in a Muay Thai fight. You know, I don't give a fuck that he trained in Thailand. That kid needs an ass beating. Mm. search for productivity hacks but i i heard a, one of the top business coaches in the world uh give a speech and he said you should turn your biggest three procrastinations into um into uh 
your three biggest priorities. Okay. So like, think about it. What are your three biggest things you're procrastinating on tomorrow? Make those your three biggest priorities. And he went into the whole like explanation of why procrastination happens. And there's like a bunch of like fear associated with it. And also like uncertainty and all this stuff. You just have to fucking face it head on. Right. So what have you been putting off? Go do that after this stream or go do it in the morning and then it's done. You don't have to fucking let it stress you for, for weeks or days, however long you're fucking procrastinating it. Um, let's see. No matches despite two pro photo shoots. Uh, the photos aren't good enough. We have a 37 page guide that tells the photographers exactly how to take the photos and also gives all the top example profiles and why they work so well. Do the coaches on your team in specific countries offer individual coaching? Yes, but um, it's going to be more expensive, right? Typically, we have three guys on a boot camp, and then I got to pay the coach. And I pay the coach as well because they're very good. Um, and I have to pay their flight and hotel if they have to fly somewhere. So, you know, having three students paying ends up making it profitable as a company because right, we also have internal expenses. However, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, then, then the, the cost goes up. Obviously, you get more attention and, and we have to make the numbers work. Uh, there's a lot of uh, debate around this, but in my opinion, it's Krav Maga. I've been doing Muay Thai since 2016. Muay Thai is arguably the best stand-up fighting style and Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is arguably the best ground style, right? But other two really important martial arts that especially like make the best UFC fighters are boxing and wrestling, right? Like if you can get really good at the ground and pound stuff like Khabib, like that dominates a lot of shit, like Samba um, or Sambo or whatever. But like Krav Maga, it's an Israeli special forces israeli mil military martial art it's literally well first of all there's no rules so like in muay thai like you're you're like fighting with rules and competition right karate is like point fighting and all this shit it's like karate is like fucking bullshit for the most part right like the, the top karate masters go to thailand or, or, or to fight the dutch muay thai people and they get fucking wrecked um <laughs> yeah i don't know who that is but that's cool um with krav maga like it involves like eye pokes like fucking hitting guys in the, in the balls um hitting people in the you know in the neck um it's about like incapacitating the person and, and stopping the fight as quickly as possible like when i when i first started training krav maga they're like here's how you break someone's leg here's how you break someone's arm um it's about like surviving. It's like if you were attacked on the street, how do you fucking, you know, end the fight as quickly as possible? And you also learn, I've, I've been training in Krav Maga for a while now, one-on-one. -on -one, and you learn how to fight multiple attackers. You learn how to fight someone with a knife or a gun. Um, so, you know, again, like for like true self-defense, like on the street, Krav Maga. But, you know, for like just fun and conditioning and stuff, like Muay Thai, um, and Muay Thai is no joke, right? But like if you don't have any ground game and you get taken to the ground, then you're in deep shit, right? Um, yeah, the fucking, you know, guys, I have a lot, I have a lot of respect for, for guys like Khabib and guys like um, the Islam guy. Not, not is he's Islamic religion too. Like his name is Islam, um, but they're like undefeated, right? 
and it's because they they train like round the clock and they have like incredible amounts of discipline and they're like yeah conor mcgregor's a joke he's like too concerned with like partying and drinking and shit and they're right right like conor isn't like hungry he's lost like four of his last five fights or something he just like cherry picks easy fights that he thinks he can win there's a huge difference even though he's like the most popular guy in the sport there's a huge difference between a guy like that and and like khabib and and his cousin or whatever this guy islam that um you know are not afraid to fight anyone number one number two like never lose and number three like push themselves to the limits at all times like the amount of like mental discipline and fortitude is is incredibly admirable i don't have that personally it's like something i'd like aspire to um and yeah i agree I you know but it's good to know how to disarm those people and, and deal with those situations in a worst case scenario um all right i'm gonna wrap up here in a minute I think he lost once or something and it was it was like nine years ago or something like that um yeah we have we have online coaching for my coaches as well for cheaper than me um i tell them like you know i'll teach <laughs> i got their little fucking outfits on loki like he's got a little fucking he just ate. He got a little fucking cow out there. Because <laughs> it's cold today. Uh, let's see. We've got three of these little fuckers. Ugh. We speak to them in Portuguese. This this little one here got me a good Tinder picture because she's got a she's got a cute little face. The girls the girls all say they want to meet my dog. Ugh. All right. Um, yeah, you just tell them, like, you know, we don't have to rush anything. I can teach you a lot about sex, blah, blah, blah. You know, not like not pressuring, not pushing hard has great effects, paradoxically. Uh, since you've called out a lot of people, are you worried about running into them in real life? No, not at all. What are they going to do? kill me assault me no not worried about fucking calling a spade a spade and having repercussions about that people death threat me all the time um i i can i can hold hold my own if i get attacked but no i'm not i'm not fucking worried about that um <laughs> imagine being afraid of running into austin summers <laughs> it's like a hundred different like insults cycling through my head. I can't pick which one. Maybe he'll be, you know, feeling strong on his on his 18th birthday or something like that. Um, yeah. K close. Uh, not as many as I would have liked to. Like uh, you know, that talk about a fucking invitation to approach. When we walk around with the dogs, hot girls walk up all the time because they're they're blue French bulldogs, which is really rare. And there's three of them. You like never ever see blue French bulldogs, and we have three of them. So like, and they're all really cute. So the girls all come up. I told Liz we should fucking bring them around areas of hot girls more often. Um, do you think if you weren't as smart as you are, your success in dating would be way different? Um, yeah. It would it would be way worse i mean like it's precisely my uh intellectual and analytical mind i'm, I'm literally like one minute away. um come show your hair she curled her hair all nice for valentine's day here um no i mean that's precisely what got me to level I, that i'm at <laughs> liz will be in miami as well um helping revamp the guy's profiles and 
potentially helping them get better wardrobes, maybe being a wing woman. We'll see. Um, okay. So, if there's any last minute fucking. Yeah, Mr. still gets laid a lot. He has some younger European girlfriend, I'm pretty sure. Um,. I mean, I'm, I'm really into Latinas and in the top Latina cities in the world by lots of different rankings are in Brazil and Argentina. So I think Brazil and Argentina have the hottest Latinas overall, possibly Medellin as well, but it's too, dang too dangerous there. Um, yeah, I did a standardized IQ test in the university setting and got a 155. Um, I don't think there's a, a requisite IQ level to get my results. I've taught guys of all various intelligence levels to figure out the system required a good deal of analysis, but to implement it does not require a high IQ at all. Oops, my bad, I fucking hit the back button on my mouse. Um, Okay, so we're coming up on three hours. We were supposed to go to dinner like an hour ago. I'm going to end it there. Um, if you guys want to train with me on the eight-week program, go to platinumdatingsystem.com. There literally is one spot left on Miami. That's July 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. It will be five jam-packed days of immersion, doing day game and night game every day and learning everything about the game and fixing all your problems in game um, comprehensively. Okay, so and that spot will probably go today or tomorrow, I'm assuming. Um, so get on one of those calls ASAP if you are interested in joining that. If you can't afford an expensive program, we have uh, Occam's Razor and Leads Machine as the do-it-yourself options, cheaper products. We also have three-day boot camps that we can run any city around the world. And we have the eight-week program at PlatinumDaysis.com or you can go to the pinned comment in the chat or in the description and sign up for a 30 minute call thoughts on nofap it's fucking retarded i made a video about it and went over the science or lack thereof it's really stupid i've never done it never will do it and even advanced guys i know that are getting laid fucking jerk off still sometimes not a big deal unless it's like a full-blown addiction which is a problem regardless of whether it's nofap or anything else uh then, then that can become a problem right if it makes you like not procure sex in the real world because you're content with jerking off in the fantasy world, then um, that could be a problem. Okay. Um, are you ready, babe? Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like types, Todd's girl is 200 pounds. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, there's whole fucking channels devoted to it. And then there's all the fucking semen retention bullshit. Idiots like LFA who say like, yeah, brother, just retain the semen and the girls are going to come to you like a magnet. That's absolute fucking bullshit. Go try it and watch it not happen. And then, you know, tell me later how fun it was wasting your time and not busting a nut at all. Um. You have to get to know the girl. How can you say if a woman is a good quality person or not? Does she lie? Does she come from a good family? Does she have a good moral system? Does she have ambitions? Uh, did she bang you on the first date? There's a lot of things that go into that equation. Right? And depends on what your own values are, what you're looking for. I'll actually go one more minute so we break three hours. Final minute. Um, any final thoughts in, the, in this last minute thoughts on destiny I, I just recently you know I respect him that he's a technical competitive video game player right it takes a level of intellect and analyticism for that I used to play Starcraft competitively myself but 
I just recently find out found out that he admitted on streams to sucking cock and that he likes sucking cock. Um, so that was a bit alarming. And I'm going to do videos about that. Not a lot of you probably didn't know that. He says it on No Jumper. He's like apparently bi, which is a bit strange. Um, no, I heard about it. If anybody could fucking send me the cliff notes on that shit. <laughs> Email it to John at JohnAnthonyLifestyle.com. Yeah. He is Jeffrey. And Adonis is who he wish he was that he'll never be. So that's that. Thank you guys again. Uh, Three-hour stream. It's been fun. And I will catch everybody soon. Oh, let me drop the uh, the link to our side channel one more time. We're, we're trying to announce this more often. We release regular videos and shorts every day on this side channel. So please... Subscribe for extra content. The side channel is not banned and is going to probably become the main channel at some point. So make sure that you get in now before it blows up. This is the, the side channel. Yeah, De Destiny allows his chick to fuck guys and Destiny sucks guys' cocks um, and has blue hair. You know, so all that shit's kind of weird. But he is a rational thinker. Oh. So that part's interesting. Uh, and I did give him, uh, you know, I, I ranked him higher than a lot of like traditional pickup coaches when I did my tier list just because his analysis regarding like the red pill and Andrew Tate and, and other various topics is pretty spot on. Um, here's the side channel. So make sure you get on that. Um, subscribe so you don't miss any content there. Okay, guys, thank you.